Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We got some 3 1 series. We got some 2 2 series. We got a lot of ball to talk about. But before we do that, let me remind you to leave a like on the episode now. Go over to Spotify, pre download these episodes. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, and come over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. And big announcement we've been teasing it for a long time. We're going on tour, ladies we and gentlemen. We in Philly, baby. We going to Philly to start off. That's May 19th is the actual date of the show. The city of um, brotherly love. The city of brotherly love, man. Wow. We're going to really be putting on the show. They, they were the first. They were supposed to be the first one to get it in the first place. So we, it's only right that when we go back, they still get first. Dish. This is big in the uh, through the wire lore because we were going to Philly and then the world shut down uh, the day we were the day before we were supposed yep. to leave for Philly for a live show. And we back. The world is open. And Philly is our first stop, mm-hmm. but it's not our only stop. So if you aren't in Philly, just know we're going on a little, you know what I'm saying, USA tour. They, oh, I guess. We're going out we, the country, too. D- deeper than USA. Yeah, we coming we're everywhere. out the country, too. <laughs> no, uh, I love it, Now though. everybody out the country think, hoping we coming to their country. We're going to Australia, New Zealand. No, no, no. We ain't going that far yet. <laughs> Yeah, the, the difference in Through the Wire is a whole lot bigger, too, since when we were initially going to go to Philly. Yeah, too. I think that we yeah. were selling 36 tickets, and we were like, oh, shit, we got 36 people there. Uh, and now it should be way more. So hit the link in the description. It's a free show. Mm. Um, just come in, show up, and uh, we'll put on a show for y'all. I think half of it, we're going to be talking about basketball, and the other half, we're going to be rapping. Shout out to my boy Lance. Lance is going to be in Philly. Shout out to Lance. Shout out to, Shout Lance. Out to Lance. He sent me a DM a few weeks ago, like, this is the anniversary is it the Lance I'm thinking about, the Photoshop guy? Yep. Okay, Lance shout out to him. Man. Shout out to him. Met him in uh, New York a couple months ago. Um, I'm excited to meet my boy Lance. Hopefully we're, not, we're not rapping, by the way. I was, just, I was talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> Hopefully it's enough time for all of y'all in the surrounding cities to get there, man. I was pushing for this to be announced properly and done right. But here we are just doing it at the top of the podcast. We're going to make it work regardless. But I know a lot of y'all in Jersey, New York, Delaware, maybe even Boston, any of y'all in Bristol have expressed y'all interest? I don't know where that is. That's in Connecticut. Oh. Drive That's where ESPN up is or at. drive down to be able to come to a show. So hopefully y'all have enough time to book a hotel. The New York show. I don't know if y'all remember. Remember Chino flew from for Toronto, right? Or so from Canada? Didn't someone come from the Bahamas as well? That was at the Chicago Live Show. That was at the show. Chicago Live Show. So oh. I, I I know how our people oh, get yeah, down true. for us, man. So I'll be trying to push to get this shit out in a way, way ahead of time in a decently manner to get everybody that's willing to travel for us. So hopefully it's enough time, man. You got If you don't make the- Philly, there's t- there's two other stops. So you should at least, least two wrong. other stops. Yeah. Um just hit the link in the description. It's free, but you do have to RSVP and get your name on the list. Um and once the occupant thing has hit its limits, we're gonna cut it off. So get get in now. Show up, show out, man. Show up and show out. Speaking of that, Ime Udoka's back in the NBA. Um, to, uh, Houston Rockets. Out of, not I want to say out of left field. They interviewed a lot of different people, but a lot of people speculated that Nick Nurse was the next guy. Um, but it's Ime. He's back like in the game, it. I man. Like it. I, I they think, punishing the hell out of him. I don't think so. I think that they, they don't have their own first-round pick this season, so they're going to try to be competitive. I mean, is that team? I don't really see that team being competitive, though. They didn't show Jayla me any Green signs. Jalen Green says so. Though. There was no signs last year of them being competitive. Like, it wasn't like an nah, OKC they're, thing. Nah, they're far like away. Last year, OKC was like, oh, yeah, they, this is going to be their next year. Houston didn't really show me that I was ju- I was joking about the um, punishing the punish. him. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, they have I, some I, of the highest cap in this this year, um, and they want to bring in veterans. I think bringing in, ve- bringing in veterans automatically adds more yeah, wins to veterans? the roster. I know they want to go get James Harden. James Harden, oh. sure, he can make you remotely competitive. Um, but other than that, what else are they adding around him that's available? And that's a pipe dream in itself. Because what if the Philadelphia 76ers, the one team in the entire playoffs who handled their business in four games and are chilling already in the next round, what if they're going to have a great rest of the playoffs? He's not going to he's not going to Houston. Uh, good for Houston. It's a good signing. In, in all in all seriousness, a round of applause for Houston. That was a good move. But I'm I'm not signing up on a hype train of them being competitive. It's just no, a, a step in the right direction. I, compet- competitive is meaning for me at least that they're not a top three pick in next year's draft again, which yeah, they were see, the last three that. seasons. I don't see that, and I don't think they would be wrong if they were back in that situation. I think they would be. Their team is not good. There, it's not, but it's still like, how many years can you convince your fan base that we're going to be at the bottom of the of the league? This is this is, we're going into year four. That's why you bring they in the guy. They, yeah, they can't control. They that. can't control that though. Yes, they can. 
How? By c- putting together a competent roster with competent coaching. See Where this, it, how do you it's, it's, give me the give me a realistic game plan on how the Rockets can do that in this I, I again I legitimately think that upgrading your coaching, which they did, uh-huh. uh, I think Ime Udoka is miles ahead of Steven Silas as far a, as head he coaching. Has a lot of work cut out for him. Absolutely. This is I'm, not, I'm trying to break it down. Boston. I'm breaking it down. This I'm breaking Boston. it down. While you're breaking it down, I'm going to chime in though. They had they they put together now a better coaching situation. They bring in some veterans that can help these young dudes understand the game of basketball deeper than it's my turn, your turn. Like? I, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head who's the best free agent signers for them. You I'm think- just telling you that they're going to try to attempt to do that in order for them not to end up having a top three pick. I think that this year when they have, well, if everything stays the way they are, they're going to have a top four pick in this year's draft. Yes. Obviously, they want number one, but if they don't get number one, number two and number three seem damn good as well. Mm-hmm. So that automatically makes them better. But having somebody that could potentially come in and start to build the culture, something we've talked about in the show that they have not had over the last couple mm-hmm. seasons, could go a very long way from being a 22-win team to a 33-win team. And that is progress for them. I agree, but I think that's long term. You don't the, – it's so messed up over there that I think it's unfair – to say they're going to bring him in and be competitive, and then they're going to bring in veterans. It is This ain't 2K. They have a lot. To teach them how to play good basketball is mm-hmm. going to be at least a season of doing. At least a season of doing. At least. And right. then, yeah, bringing in a top four pick, it does help you get better for the long run. Now, I, I, what rookie besides Vic is coming in and this team is just – I don't it's see a, it. And on Jabari. top of all of that, if they have the perfect offseason – the, the Washington Conference is extremely competitive. Motherfuckers like 12 deep. It takes Jabari half the season to get right and for him to get going. So I, it's just they already – they're so young over there. I feel like it's hard to kind of even spread those men. And even if they do pick up veterans, I feel like it's more so locker room just because they, they're literally young as hell over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like more. you need to give them that experience. So obviously you don't want to take too much minutes off the court for them. But I think I'm okay with them being like a couple years away. I don't Me think there's a rush yeah. just because – you know, the situation they're in. And honestly, like I said, how deep it is, you get these dudes a couple of years, maybe you now you're looking like the Thunder and you have, you know, three, four dudes that are actually solidified, you know, ready to go. Yeah, so I you, don't think there's nothing wrong with going through a few-year rebuild. Like, I think that's normal. Like, when you go through a rebuild... How, even, how many teams have been bottom of the league five years in a row? Ever. How many years are, are they yeah. in this their is, process? This is year again? three right now. Next year be year four again. They don't even have their own first round mm-hmm. pick, so it don't even be. It can't even be like, oh, we not gonna play uh, Shingun or Jalen Green because we about to get another top. Three. They don't have a pick this year. It's going to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. But to, but that's whatever. I, I don't think not having your pick makes you competitive. You, you should always be trying to win. But they're not good. But that's the not thing. what they've done either. Though. They're not good. You're right, but that's not what they've done either. They've. They will pull the guys when they feel like the game is too close because they want that pick. And now we will be in more situations where they are actually trying to win basketball games from the coaching perspective because the players are always going to try to win basketball games. That is facts. Jalen Green don't give a damn about the second overall pick. And I'm a believer that if they didn't take those them out, that they wouldn't have had they wouldn't have had a, a much different year. I don't think that they would have been all of a sudden this different team because nope. the competition level is just too high right now for that young team. They have Kevin Porter Jr. who played out of position. They have Jalen Green, Shingon, Tari Eason. Mm-hmm. Like the entire team is just extremely young. They are babies. And I think they all have to, to take some time and have a couple of years of putting a thing fully together. Even Jalen Green, he's their standout guy. We're still trying to see exactly how good Jalen Green is going to be. Because in order to break through, you have to legitimately have some some guy with, like, real, real star quality. Like, I think Jalen Green is going to be good, but I'm still trying to figure out how good. Is he going to be the level of Devin Booker, Jason Tate? Is he that type of good? Or is he, like, a guy that's going to be next to the guy and you're, look, and you're looking to draft that guy in this draft? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. So I think to try to say that they're going to be competitive – it's like, yeah, they, they're going to try to be a better team, I believe. I, I hope so. But even with that attempt, when I look at the Western Conference as it is right now, I, I it it's a very uphill battle for me. For, for me, competitiveness is not losing 15 in a row. Um, and that's something they've done five times in the last three seasons. So um, I, I guess our perspective on what competitiveness yeah, because I, is. Okay, cool. They don't lose 15 in a row. I think they'll still be at the bottom of the West. 
agree. If they're not we'll 15, see. they're 14. I see both sides. KB <laughs> just wants to honestly see progress. Mm-hmm. I think me and P are just like, it could be progress, but it's not going to be much. Well, no, I'm not expecting them to jump into a play-in race. I think 10 games is a lot, though, for a Houston Rockets team. I'm just trying to keep it realistic you for know, them. Just for take, them. Take, 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 just be better. Mm-hmm. Be better than you were last year. And I think that's all they need to do. Which is basically what I'm saying as well. Oh, okay. Because mm-hmm. I, when you throw out competitive, that, I being that better, that, winning more games is being more competitive. In, in, in this game, competitive is what the, the Thunder were. We looked at the Thunder as a more competitive team this well, year. Well, if, if I gave off that, that's not what I'm – I didn't want to say that they were going to well, make a play-in. That's what competing is. Competing is trying to make the playoffs. I it's make competitive as in like, hey, we're not losing every single game by 20 points. Instead, that we are in these games. We're going to have clutch moments for Jabari Smith Jr. to have two back-to-back game-winning games or when Jalen Green could take over like fourth quarter. Did. But it more, more frequently. Okay. Where it's not fifteen straight losses, but we lose with an average margin of vic- uh, yeah, loss yeah, of nineteen and a half. I guess we probably are saying the same thing because I think even if you don't lose fifteen games in a row a couple uh, this next year, I think they still could be thirteenth, fourteenth, or fifteenth in their conference, which is going to mm-hmm. be at the bottom. Which is yet again like thirty three wins, like I said earlier. Right. Mm. Either way, Shout they got, they got a higher. long ass journey. Very good hire. Very good hire. That's all I look for for teams like this. Make proper moves and take the baby steps. Rushing the process and doing all that dumb shit, it's just going to have you sped up back to where you at at ground zero anyway. Probably a better hire than what Nick Nurse would have done. No yeah, disrespect. I, I think I, Nick Nurse I, is going to get a good job and everything, and he's a good coach. Um, he's a championship coach, which is uh, something a lot of people can't say. But it feels like he is uh, formulaic in the sense that, like, what we saw with Toronto, our dudes might play 45 minutes because we really want to win these games. And I feel like Eme is a little bit more wide open, even though his mm. experience is what? A season? Mm. <laughs> it's season two. Um, but in that season, is, he was great. Um, it's just like he he seems very organizational, too. And I don't know if like maybe that could have been beneficial for the Rockets. But also, like you said, it maybe didn't fit his style, too. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to also run off his through Shingo. I wonder if he's going to also take. It took Steven Silas like half a season to figure out that he needs to run his offense through Shingo. Shit, it took him more than that. That's why he's out of there. <laughs> Where Shingo didn't play whole fourth quarters because yeah reasons. Um, damn, that's 15 minutes on a coach and hire. We in the playoffs, man. We in the goddamn play. What series do you want to start off with? Well, let's just say this. You came in and said we had a couple. We only have one 2-2. Two, two. Every series besides the one oh, yeah. done yeah, every, is yeah. 3-1. Because Everything I is forgot there was a 4-0 sweep over it. That's the series that – kind of didn't exist in my mind which it makes me more it didn't exist because he lost the bet oh i did lose the bet to Derek. <laughs> um we didn't even agree on a number we just said a white sox we just ticket said a white sox get which them. is two dollars and i got that in my wallet uh. right now so we we can we can <laughs> get that done let's start off with last night the los angeles Lakers. no 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 let's start off with the with the first game last night because i'm wearing my jimmy butler shirt because that man just you want to take a look at it yeah who is it Michael Jordan. It's Michael fucking Jordan. I thought that's, that's what we, it was. That's what we saw yesterday. <laughs> Reincarnated. Um, potentially, go watch the Corzimba video if you want to know what the chances are of Jimmy Butler being the offspring of Michael Jordan. Um, a wild ass conspiracy for no reason, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> wild conspiracy. I was bored in a pandemic. Boy. <laughs> video did numbers, though, so hey, do your thing. Um, Jimmy Butler put together the well, fourth highest scoring game in playoff history. <laughs> yes. But I said in my video that it's a little bit more impressive than some of the teams or games above it. Jordan had, what, 63? 63. And a loss. No disres- Again, no disrespect. It was a young Jordan versus Larry Bird. Larry and Bird, no. The Celtics. Still and they better were than Jimmy's. But I, here, here's my argument, a, a reason why I would say Jimmy's is better, but maybe marginally. They lost that game. The Bulls lost that game in double overtime. So that, that boy had basically one full more quarter worth of basketball that Jimmy didn't have. And Jimmy won as the eighth seed against a one seed that's not fully healthy, obviously. But to put them up 3-1, I think the stakes make it better. And again, um, Jordan lost. Then after that, we saw Elgin Baylor put up 61 in the or 62 in the 1962-63 mm-hmm. season. They won that game. Then we saw Donovan Mitchell in the bubble put up a crazy number in overtime that they eventually lost yeah. to the Nuggets. And then we got this one. And this shit felt like it really was 61. Maybe it was. It felt like a movie, too, because that Michael Jordan game is ridiculous, bro. Yeah, especially when you rewatch it on um, ain't Ain't he like the six documentary. years younger than Jimmy Butler when he did that? Bro? Absolutely, yeah. This yeah, was like year this three. One, yeah, this, this is one, year uh, three. Give me, like, give me Jordan. Like mid-early 80s? Give me the Jordan one. The tween-tween baseline. Yeah, that's, that moment going to live come, forever. Come on, man. Well, for the Jimmy Butler game, because let's just stick on that. That shit felt like a movie. 
Uh, he first of all he came out busting. He had like twenty two in the first quarter. Came out bust. Yeah. He he came out showing his ass, as Pete like to say. But got that from Kyra. It also has so many moments because we seen like everybody on Jimmy Butler. We seen Drew Holiday on. We seen Giannis on. We seen Chris Middleton on him, and it didn't really matter for him. Like he was in that type of zone. And then not only that, he was doing shit on the other side of the court too. And it was just like he's everywhere tonight. He he was locked and he wasn't gonna lose. And like I said, my favorite play is when they had that little breakaway steal and Jimmy Butler just, he hung on it for a little extra second because it was just a big turning point in that game. I love, the, the, this I love is the, my, yeah. I love the Cal Lowry steal at the end and then he has to step back three and transition. I'm just like, damn. He couldn't miss. We yeah. watching this in Discord. Yeah. And of course my game is faster than Mike's. And I'm like, no fucking way he just did it again. Like, he is not the three-point shooter that he was last night. Mm -hmm. And I think he ended up being, what, three of eight or something. It wasn't even nothing crazy. But they were so but timely, timely too. The, and you know what it was? It was because you Drew was going underneath the screen. Most, majority, as, as you would guard Jimmy Butler, yeah. you're going underneath the screens. And it was just like, this night, he, wasn't going, he was going to hit him when he needed him. And that transition what? one, though, was different. Yeah, that was a dagger. That yeah. was different. Yeah. This, is, this is why that in that game where he pulled up in transition, it wasn't a bad shot. Because he can make it. <laughs> he got his clothes a badge. Yeah. Um, no, but it, it was overall just a ridiculous performance. And now, I mean, that win has significant complications across basketball. It's I scary. picked the Milwaukee Bucks to win the fucking finals. They might not make it out of the first round. Based off a two-game injury. Two, two, th damn near three, Jimmy. I mean, uh, yeah, he missed the Giannis first game. He got hurt early. In the first quarter. So yeah. um, this is, is a lot of injuries if going on. If they handled their business, mm -hmm. this is a sweep. Because they remember they lost the game. Yeah, the got first dominated. Game yeah. That, yeah, Giannis did set out completely yeah. game two. Chris Middleton showed his ass. Yeah. So if they handle their business that game, boom. Um, this this performance it was magnificent. It, it, it's why the older I get, I like guys like him and uh, Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a dribble wasted. Mm -hmm. Getting yes. to spots. You know, the, and it's pump. It, it, the contact, the yeah. footwork, the, the footwork, footwork was yep. like crazy. And it's a lot of counter. You come, I step back. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You come and I'm hitting the shot. Now I'm driving by you. It's just very, very calculated. And like I said, it's, you're able to do it at a high level because you don't waste so much energy bullshitting around with the basketball. Guys like Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, uh, very surgical. Devin Booker can be Kevin that way. Durant. Kevin Durant, Kobe used to be that way. Older Jordan, um, even not necessarily older Jordan, but guys are just looking to get to how many how how many dribbles can it take me to how less dribbles could it take me to get to what I'm trying? How to can do? I be the most efficient with my movement? Exactly, it's, it's it's what you should. Yeah. yeah, I mean Clay Thompson, Clay right Thompson, now, so Clay doing Thompson. It out. But I mean, that's <laughs> a little bit different with his. He just doesn't have the, the yeah. range of the bag. It ain't yeah. like he's choosing. He just don't have an option. I, I love that Jimmy. He's playing like he smells blood in the water. Like he he sees that this team is wounded, they're hurt, and he's coming out and putting his foot on their neck. He put in this uh, Instagram story. Um, it was like a deer in hunting season with the scope on it. That was that was game one. But that it wasn't was just something that changed. I think that really. also wasn't. Like a buck that was a doe, like it was like a female deer. Mm -hmm. I think that was. I don't think Jimmy Butler really. Knew I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was. Oh. I think he just was saying like there's something that resembles a buck. I'm gonna shoot him and I'm gonna win this series. I yeah. thought it meant like that's not a real buck. They're like a female deer. Why would he be like, posting that deer? I don't know. Take two. <laughs> like he didn't take him seriously. He, he's not on Animal Planet like you take are, Derek. Two and two and just put it together. Yeah, he's My playing way. the bucks. A buck is in the scope. He's gonna take down the bucks. Okay. I don't think Jimmy Butler went out of his way to not get the – he's like typical – typical people like us three just sitting right here on this couch, we don't know what you just said. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> so he thought it was a, 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 a buck. Okay, my but bad. But maybe, maybe Jimmy is stupidly locked in, even on that sense. No, because – with like six minutes ago, I thought the Bucks were pulling this game out. They were up by 11 with four I thought four they were pulling long. out, and it was just something that happened. It's just like – no, Jimmy Butler was going to lose that game. Caleb Martin also had a – Caleb Martin had a T up too. It's my boy. But I'm going to be honest with you. What? He got to win game. They, they have to win their fourth game. I know. We talked about it before this. All of these 3-1 series, there's so many. Somebody's bound to blow one. Mm -hmm. And as a Nick fan who's also <laughs> up 3-1, I am not going to get comfortably – are comfortable until we win the last game. What series? What series has the highest probability of a three-one comeback? I think it's this one. 
the Heat just because Giannis is back. With Giannis, it took a damn game, yeah, all time performance of Jimmy <laughs> Bully yeah, for them to come right. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If anything was gonna happen, it's this one. I don't. Yeah. I feel like that the Denver Nuggets business is done. Yes. The Suns business is done. Yes. I think the Knicks business is done. Um, I hope, say the Lakers. I hope so. Oh, with, I forgot about the Lakers. The La- I think the Lakers right? business is done. With John Moran hand, it's definitely done. Yeah, I and think the way he's done. going in the, the way air, he be John, bro, he's, he's, he's trying to end it. <laughs> we go, we go get there. <laughs> Last no, night he had a real. play where he he trying to jump over LeBron. Thing. He jumped on LeBron's neck. Yeah, and LeBron got right back right up. Right back up. Um, you know who's had a fraudulent run right now? Who's in the middle of one? Dylan Brooks, Coach Budenholzer. Oh, no way, your team. Brian Reynolds, baby. Eight year, 106. 106. Finally got his money. Um, Shout out Brian Reynolds. Base, big baseball guy. No way the opposing team in the fourth quarter goes on a 13 0 run and you don't call a timeout somewhere in between there. No mm-hmm. way. And, and yeah. Bud has been given the benefit of the doubt, obviously, because once you win a championship, all the criticisms that you. Yeah. yeah, all the criticisms that you saw beforehand are gone. You did it, you did it, you did it. But shit, it's been a f- few years removed from that one, but And to see Jimmy having the performance that he did, and you want to do nothing to potentially cool him down by giving him a one-minute timeout, doing something, it's crazy to me. Yeah, and I feel like you should just double him and just force anyone else to meet, beat you. They were trying to do different. So I won't say that he made no adjustments because, they, like you mentioned earlier, it was Drew sometimes. It was Chris here. Sure, it I was Giannis. Brooke Lopez, he, he, the nigga did a bro- up and under on Brooke Lopez. Hey, Brooke uh, Lopez had a, a ridiculous game. game, and it they they blew it. Like, that's a game you win. If Brooke is giving you 36, and Giannis, Giannis is giving double. you almost a 30-point triple-double. That is a game you win nine times out of ten, but you saw a historic performance. Coach Budenholzer, it, it let y'all get eliminated in the first round. I got, I got an idea what the fuck is gonna happen next. Even with the, <laughs> even with the injuries, I think your team is good enough and showed us is good enough to win this series. They have a better team. They even do without Giannis. Because that's than the real. Miami Heat. Right now, it's the Jimmy Butler show, and he occasionally get a Kayla Martin shot or a Kyle Lowry um, steal. You ain't getting a lot offensively for Bam out of bio right now. Because Bam out of bio been so. He's been MIA. Defensively, he's, he's there. Defensively, he's there. He's there. Offensively, the it's like, bam, I need, where was that 20 point set? Mm-hmm. You know, where was that 20 point set? I mean, so. but with that being said, the last two possessions of the game is Giannis going straight at the rim and bam is there bam to contest there. and pre- prevent the basket. So, like, of course, you want more from the guy you pay a max contract to that was just an all star. But the defense has been so damn good that I'm like, you know? It's, I can't believe they pulled through, man. Yep. No oh, wait, 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 yeah. They, you I mean, mean it's the game. game. Okay, okay. The game. Yeah, it's just uh, no Tyler Hero. Mm-hmm. No um, VO, man. God no damn. That's yeah, so. That's, 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 we didn't, everything yeah, is against them. Yeah, everything is going chance. wrong for them, and they still manage to win games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that one was ridiculous because usually you see somebody have a significant injury. It's like, ah, on the ground. He had the reaction of somebody that's been there before. He held it. He looked up. He shook his head. No. Like, he, he knew himself, and that's just sad as hell, man, for him to keep fighting and going through injury, fighting and going through injury. I saw some ex- experts, they're like real doctors, so I, I don't know why I did this, saying that, like, <laughs> coming back from this injury and then his last two injuries at his age, almost impossible. He going to give it a try. He's Victor yeah. Oladipo. He, you know, he's got the heart of a champion, the voice of an angel, but it's going to be rough. Yeah. It's, it's sad to rough. see guys who you see are like, Hungry to want to be back, and they just keep their body just don't allow, allow him to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was playing good basketball the game too. And like he he had an and one, he was all hyped and shit. And I I love to see that. And then just to see him get hurt is just sad. Yeah. Duncan Robinson. Like, oh my god, oh, the Duncan, Duncan Robinson, Robinson was shooting the ball was... like crazy. Man was getting DMP coaches <laughs> decisions, bro. Yes, and then all of a sudden he's just alive. He's back. It's the 2020 <laughs> bubble again. The hand was forced all these injuries. Yeah, and he said, "I'm gonna get on this court and I'm gonna stay." They need one white boy that can <laughs> score. And he took he took the title right back. It's like next year they still giving him DMPs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service, but get back on that bench, bro. The Lakers uh, gonna eat that. Al- also, Kevin Love. They <laughs> should say that. That's oh. crazy. Kevin Love. Bro. Kevin Love is started back into the starting lineup after a few games of doing nothing. He had the one game we had was seventeen points 18, or something. I think. something um, like that. He's he's back playing decent enough basketball to become a threat. So. I, it's it's like the perfect storm for them. After they beat the Bulls in the play-in, Jimmy Butler was like, 
I, I know that everybody is counting us out because we're the, you know, coming through the play in, but I honestly do believe that we can win this series. Uh, he didn't predict that Giannis was going to follow his ass so hard that it's going to break, mm -hmm. but he, here they are one game away. Somehow, no, I guess facts, them losing so. to Atlanta was a blessing. I don't they, know. They, they, it seemed like they fell into going a against, series. Going against, going the, against Celtics. the Celtics. Yeah, that would have been. But, yeah. but the Heat be having a Celtics number. Yeah, but I don't think they would have. No, not, not like this. I it's, like yeah. I like what Eric Spolstra was saying because I feel like we can get into it with the Lakers too, but I feel like the same way is well, just. I always try to transition to I the mean, Lakers. It's, it's a similar type of thing, but it's just like <laughs> their games, the whole season, first of all, it's been kind of that next man up mentality. So it's good to have Duncan Robinson and Kevin Love kind of step up when people go out, but. They didn't never. They weren't the team that put up 150 points or always blew teams out. Like they always had to like grind out these games, and for them to be doing it in the playoffs is like okay, we're kind of made for this shit, you know. After this whole season, yeah, it's just. I mean, it's more so seeing like Jimmy's made for it. Jimmy's always going to take his game to a whole nother level in the playoffs. Yeah, and it's just like, what is everybody else going to do? And that's kind of where your ceiling is. It's just pretty much you're going to get a Jimmy Butler show, and your team's going to probably fall short. In a perfect world. Jimmy runs himself into the ground and win the series for them, and then we are able to just walk yeah. right up. There, That's so. yeah. The Knicks might be in the conference finals. That's crazy. That's crazy. I hope uh, all our teams are in the conference finals one day in our lifetime. Oh but wait, no, we experienced that. I was a we was in high school, but the Bulls were in the conference finals twice. I was just talking about for the people up here currently this year. Oh. All our teams are in the are in the conference finals. You got a long route, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Your route a little bit more difficult than what the, the Knicks are going through right that now. That would be crazy to see Blazers, Lakers first round, Bulls, Knicks in the conference finals. That would be crazy. You what if it. we get a Lakers and Knicks finals? <laughs> oh, that would be crazy. Bro, I think I said yesterday, they yesterday they do. Oh, you yeah. know he is. I would have to be in the garden for that one. Somewhere. HOH. You can't have two of the biggest fans of the fan base not be there, right? And not even <laughs> just in the building. Course that oh, next shit. to Spike. We have to probably pay us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Knicks series because again they're up three one, and uh, they just looks in the purest sense like the better team on all aspects. Even with Julius Randle scoring seven points and shooting two for ten and getting benched in the fourth quarter, <laughs> they still look like the better team. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Jalen Brunson's been the best <laughs> player in the series. Yeah. Mitchell Robinson has been the best big in the series. Yes. And Tom Thibodeau has been the better coach in the series. And all mm -hmm. of that combined, goddamn. Besides that little third quarter run from Darius Garland Darius in that last, in that know, last game, this team has looked pretty good. I was good. so scared when I was <laughs> Yeah, I was too. I was like, oh, shit, here he come. Here you go. I was all like, right. only thing Donovan got to do is give him a little bit of something. And guess and Donovan, what? Donovan ain't give him nothing. <laughs> Donovan tried, though. Donovan tried, and it felt like they was right RJ there. It, was just, the it always felt like they've been missing That's something. Crazy. Each <laughs> I always felt like Imagine, they've been missing yeah. something each game. Yeah. But. I I am just more surprised that the Cavs offense hasn't been able to be average. Yeah. It hasn't even been close to it. With I mean, that's top what I, 10. That's oh, what yeah. I did right? to you. Yeah, I guess so. Y'all haven't even really been a defensive team until this point. Like, y'all been a good defensive team. But in the, this playoff so far, it's been a, like, best defense in the playoffs good. Like, that's how. That's where it matters. The man. switch. Yeah. No, switches, the switch has been real. Um, I guess essentially they're just saying we're going to. Slow down the two guards, and everybody else is gonna have to. Try well, to I'll tell you one thing: it's real, so it's, it's yeah. so good to see Karis LeVert try to win them games. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I might have to buy me a Karis LeVert jersey. He get those moments where he just say, oh, "I'm shooting this. that bit." And sometimes yeah, it's eight it. straight points, and sometimes it's zero for four. Mm -hmm. You just don't know what what to expect. <laughs> what y'all always got is hard hustling, though. Mm -hmm. Hard gonna bust his both ass. of them. Obi Toppin too. Obi Toppin came in and gave him like four offensive rebounds. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the more he's more been really good these playoffs. He's too. he's he won't we'll he start won't, the series. He won't be a Nick that long. <laughs> he's got to go somewhere and spread his wings. And I think he's going to be a guy that we see as a most improved player candidate whenever he does get his opportunity. To it's go this, elsewhere. this off season when they trade R.J. Barrett and him, and then two of those picks to go get the the last piece. I don't know who – is it Paul George, like Bleach Report keeps suggesting in these articles? Does R.J. Barrett have that high of trade value to do that? No, but Paul George don't have high trade value either because he can't fucking stay healthy, and he's on the last year of his deal. So, you know. Um, Maybe it's Jimmy R.J. Butler. Barrett been doing his thing, though. <laughs> no, they yeah. said Jimmy Butler's spending the rest of his career yeah, here. 56 after this. in the playoffs with him and Brunson. Oh, man. So yes. Jimmy Butler on the Knicks would be crazy, bro. Star J. Barry is out. 48 minutes. Again. 48 minutes. Yeah. That's a new Third time playing for Tom minutes. Thibodeau if he ends up there. 
Imagine Chicago, Jimmy Butler, Minnesota. Josh Hart on the same team. That just sounds like a bunch of energy. Just and and, and braids. Yeah. Uh, things woven into braids. Yes. I like that New and York why? symbol in Josh Hart's head. And then he said, forget that. I'm just put a straight up W in my head. Uh, <laughs> which you respect. I mean, because he's, I mean, Star J. Barrett is out. After a rough, what, two games? Yeah. Really, really rough two games. The way he was averaging like 10 points per game on 30 something. worse than the series. And, and then, boom, there he is. Yeah, yeah, he's doing his thing now. That's all we need. We don't need 40. We need consistency of good basketball, finishing, making some open threes, and mm-hmm. defending. That's all we need, man. What yeah. are the likelihood of this being a comeback for the Cavaliers? How, how confident are y'all? I'm not confident. I'm not either. Yeah, because either. I, I still the haven't Cav- seen, like, Playoff Donovan. Donovan Mitchell hasn't really shown up. He so. was there game one. Nobody else helped him. Yeah, and so since like, then it's it been, seems like these last few games that we have it's been seen. been flip-floppy. He yeah. was game one. Garland was game two. They got, they, both of them have to, three. Both of them has to put together some magical performances. Because nobody else is. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Evan Mobley and Jared Allen aren't really giving you much offense. I'm so. excited to see, it, hypothetically, if they lose, what this offseason looks like for the Cavs. Because at the deadline, they still pat, we good, we don't need to make no trades, we'll be fine. Um, they it even bought to, out Kevin Love. They got to figure out that wing position. I, Isaac Okoro hasn't really been making shots. He's not even playing. Danny Green mm-hmm. isn't the guy. So it's like that Danny wing Green position. show made shots when they was winning in game two. Yeah. He yeah. one of those. He got to be up to 18 <laughs> to start making shots. So his, like, his hips are still. There's just like that hole at that wing spot where if Garland and Donovan ain't getting it off, then you just have like three players who really aren't going to be getting it off. So I just feel like we're going to have an Isaac Okoro three for five third from three game, and that might be enough. To win a game, but, it might. But I feel like they it might be enough to in win that game. third quarter. Darius Garland was taking off too, but I felt like they were just kind of doing what the Knicks were doing. They were really like they were holding them to one shot, and they were also getting offensive rebounds themselves. I feel like the Knicks just been doing that all forty eight, so it's been giving that edge because that one three where they got, I think it was, I think it was literally Josh Hart and he kicked it out to Jalen Brunson. He was like, "Damn, another one of those." Like those take the the air out the building. Yeah, and it's just like. It's just hard for you to have like that fight in you when you constantly giving up offensive boards. It's yeah, like, and just, I, I just don't know how you bounce back from that. You have to offensive rebound is just effort. Did Jared, the Jared like Allen feel a little underwhelming? In, in Absolutely. The yeah, I mean both he's getting he's getting out. Both of them are getting all played by Mitchell Robinson. Because I, I don't want to put too much expectations on him, but damn, bro, like I thought he was a. He was an all star last year. A better performance than what he is now. Yeah. He was an all star last season. Evan Mobley was top during Defensive Player of the Year, and it hasn't mattered. Yeah, Julius ran. Well, he had a tough game, but Julius ran to be manhandling him sometimes. Yeah, and like in the rebound aspect or boxing out and all of that. Yeah. I, I'm excited to see what the offseason could potentially look like because I I think I mentioned early or last episode that like it feels like Evan Mobley will try to add some muscle and get bigger for this offseason. Mm-hmm. But I also think that they might have to transition him to be the full time five, which means that that the fro is the odd man out, and he's going to be a valuable piece because he is great defensively why would you say they need to transition to because evan mobley is just you think the offense is is too stagnant yeah where it is donovan do us do something or um darius do something and evan mobley isn't allowed to do any really anything it does make it very congested i think for don for donovan too because you see he has to make a lot of tight ass passes like in the paint too but these aren't even problems that existed really in a regular season like this team is a good offensive team and a great defensive team but now that the game is slowed down and now we game planning exactly it's different yeah i mean that's i feel like that's every player we always talk about that like people are gonna make non-shooters and people that shoot these 35 to 40 they're gonna make them actually shoot mm-hmm. yeah, you know when this, t- they're gonna, the course gonna you shrink shooter like that in the playoffs yeah shrink that floor and say, say beat us yeah they gonna want to ever mobile that corner three every time they're gonna let them shoot it if you want to shoot 35 footers make seven of them and beat us yeah so yeah it's, I, new york is going up though for real shut down the whole street seven was well, seventh half yeah that, that street was busting bro yeah um, still, still mentioning Trey Young in these videos. I'm seeing it's like six years ago. I think years ago, just I like, like the New York, just like slow. Like it's just like the fun thing that they're gonna chant. Mm-hmm. I just like it's always gonna be there. I swear Trey Young ain't on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't be. He, he got his own be. problems. He definitely got his own problems. He got like his, his own problems. It's teammates... fun for them to just chant "fuck Trey Young." Dejounte already in Cancun. Already booked this flight. Yes, he did. Soon as he 
I just don't know. <laughs> I don't what understand he, what he what was do we going in his mind, bro? <laughs> I don't know. But hey, he got a thing for pointing at a motherfucker <laughs> like this, though. <laughs> but he ain't had to bump the ref. Didn't have to bump but him. He at gonna all. fight the ref. He could have walked up to him and said whatever he wanted to say and been into the next game. As soon as you make contact, it's a different story. Yeah, I, Depending on the context, because Jason Tatum made contact with a referee yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, his shit. But he like literally that, like, yeah. ugh, like it was like, yeah, like it was personal. And you know he has some words attached to it, and his team down three one, and yeah, he he already in Cancun. Now if that ref would have rocked his ass, then the ref would have been bad. I don't know which ref it was, but I feel like he's not winning that fight personally. <laughs> no, the ref looks surprised that he even did that it, shit. because he he's never was. been touched right. in his life. <laughs> Why? <laughs> when has a player ever done that? At I least in the current era, and of the ref probably knew. Oh, he's about to get suspended. Oh yeah, he yeah. knew. So yeah, it was he ain't. That's, he was like, oh, you really playing? Why, when did DeJounte Murray, why this offseason did he turn into a fucking villain? He loves it. I don't know, but he's been in the mix of a lot of shit. I just don't, a I don't know. A lot of shit. Also, Maybe he's always been a villain, but since he played for the Spurs and they usually the keep all of that yeah, yeah. in the house, now he freed nah, his weeds. he started wilding once he was in, he was doing uh, the Drew League shit in his ass. Uh, remember he bounced the ball up Paolo here? Yeah, but that oh, was yeah. after he got traded already. Um, they had beef. The, the they was be doing going wild back and stuff. forth on Instagram stories. Yeah, they got beef. And then I, I think they squashed it. Yeah, now, they, so then they said they squashed it. Yeah. Nah, I saw I saw his all the smoke interview. He ain't really squashed. Oh, really? <laughs> it's just, uh, I guess it's just that uh, we not gonna be going back and forth on Instagram. But I don't, oh, I don't think it's squashed. Damn, I thought. Damn, I thought they squashed. I it. did too until I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Anything about that series worth talking about? I just. I don't have a lot. Seen it, that game come on, I'll be like, you, I watched the first minutes until the next game start, and then we watch the next game. I, I think I fell asleep I like most of those games that came on. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but hey, they won a game, they and did. in the last game they made it competitive. Yeah, but it's probably over. <laughs> but now. yeah, probably. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> probably. I'm sorry. It's just not it. Uh, we we did. Jay's a handful. They definitely a handful, and uh. Fuck that. Derek White has been like the yeah. third best player in the entire series. So well, he's being guarded by Trey Young. It's like each session. Yeah. Gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. Uh last series out east, right? That's uh east. is the Philadelphia 76 are sweeping. Sweeping them. Brooklyn Petty. They couldn't get one. Couldn't get one. Especially the one without Embiid. Right. Yeah. They should have got that one. one. That one that Tyrese Maxey stole from them. That was the that, one yeah. they were supposed yeah. to win. That was the one where that was game three. Yep. Yeah. But they didn't and have hit those three. What did he score? Eight, ten straight he points. Scored eight points. points. Yeah. Yeah. Brooklyn, you petty. Luckily, Brooklyn, it was a fun series. It was competitive, but what to be that competitive and y'all not to win one is kind of crazy. Yeah. But at least y'all look competent. Like, y'all look like a decent but, I mean, team. That's a testament to the Philly. Yeah. We got to give Philadelphia some credit, man. It, it was cool to see Mikael Bridges is actually kind of like. Yeah, Mikael and really Cam nice. Johnson, they were very good this playoff run. Mikael Bridges all star next year, Locke? I feel. Uh, I, I can't say Locke, but yeah, yes. Locke is hard I would, to say, I but say I, he, so. he, he, absolutely. Shit, the way he was playing. Yeah. He yeah, averaged 26. Well, you know, everybody turns an ankle. Oh, he's not. He's the Iron Man in the NBA. Yeah, it's locked. I forgot. He does not get injured. It's locked. But he also hasn't had a workload like this to make him in a position to potentially get injured. Locked, though. Lock it up right now. I think him and Cam Johnson going to be a very good wing duo next year. I saw some reports Unless that... Unless Cam Johnson leaves. I was about to say, I saw some reports that uh, things... Because he's know, not restricted. He is restricted, right? He is restricted. Uh, yeah, is so. he? Yes, he is restricted. He old as hell. Be restricted. He, he is old as hell. He played like seven <laughs> years of college basketball. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. He's he older, older than and, us. He right. older Rookie deal. He old and flexible. <laughs> <laughs> he was bent up in that old Beamer. <laughs> Me and KB saw. I don't know if y'all saw. No. I think you the one that pointed. I ain't even see it. I just remember you saying that. I ain't see it. That nigga was in that Beamer like this. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to get to the uh, the draft lottery. Oh, we yeah. I remember when he was when he first got to New York. He was like, it took us like forty minutes to drive two miles. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. you didn't know that before you got there. Y'all didn't been in New York a few times. Um, before we get to the Western Conference, we want to. To, to oh that. yeah, shout out, shout out. So rare, the playoffs are here. Shout out to our sponsor. So rare, they'll have weekly competitions and NBA playoff tournaments running all postseason. Yes, sir. You can win all sorts of prizes and experiences worth over a hundred thousand. Check them out now at so rare.com backslash NBA. 
<laughs> bro, you and this going. this goddamn yes sir, <laughs> and you do this every time. <laughs> Come on, mix it. One, up. one of the no, one of the comments is like, I love just hearing Mike's ad libs. <laughs> 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 he gave it the same. Today's draft is gonna be small <laughs> forwards. Yes, but hey, you all are gonna hate me. What's that? I need y'all to edit the intro of the pod. Well, I think I went talk, too the, hard. T- we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. Um, are we doing favorite small forts? Yeah. Reading this just made me think we got a whole sponsor on here. <laughs> They're going to be like, flag, 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 flag. <laughs> we'll save it for the non sponsored episode. But um, small forts, best three. Are we doing favorites, though? Favorites. Or is it best? favorites? Okay. Okay. I'm okay. going first. Okay. I'm going first. That's fine. LeBron. <laughs> no. Uh. Derek, you can you you go. And then Lou we'll, all day. Hmm. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> that is your boy though. You can go, Mike. Uh give me Mello. Oh, okay. that's a very good one, even though I think he's a power forward. I'm, okay. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> um I am going to take Jimmy Butler. Oh. Not because it's topical, because we fuck with Jimmy. And then I am going to take you take a little dang, just put a little little wrench in some things. I won't lie. Uh, this guy's a wing. I'm gonna pay Paige Stoyakovich. Okay. Uh, Grant Hill, or is it Mike? It's Mike. Yeah. Take uh, Grant Hill. <laughs> <laughs> you can have LeBron. I don't want LeBron no more. Give me Metal World Peace. Okay. Okay. Wait. Ron Artest. But no, which which version? Because that's two different NBA players. Which Give version? Give me Ron Artest. Okay. Uh, I'll go Joe Johnson. Mm. Uh, I don't have LeBron no more. Grand Hill is my number one. And now you just wave LeBron and Trace McGrady. All right, he waved LeBron. Derek, are you gonna pick LeBron up? Uh, I'll pick up LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a chore. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> guess I'll take LeBron. Uh, mm, give me. He googling and shit. I said, look at the teams because I feel like who am I forgetting? I've knew who I'm forgetting. Who? I'm not gonna. <laughs> Mike, go ahead and pick Paul Pierce, man. How do you like him? I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't want to get Dookie Booty. <laughs> <laughs> give That's me, crazy. you know, give me eight Wiggins. Oh wow! Uh, I'll take Kevin Durant to round out. I was my very team. surprised with the Wiggins pick. Give me eight Wiggins. What what school he went to? In Kansas. No, no, I didn't say what college. That was school he went to. <laughs> Ain't you going? You going to try to pick your third? That was my third. I only got two. Because you I dropped had, LeBron. <laughs> yeah, so you oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Man that? said, I got the first pick and then waved the first pick. <laughs> <laughs> Who is my third, y'all? Um, uh, I can't think of small. Food. Sean Marion. Get Paul Stop George. Playing with me. Paul George. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, Paul yeah. George. There we go. Um, Those are. I left right. Danny Granger off the board. Danny Granger went undrafted. As he should in most drafts. <laughs> 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 you should have taken Andre Iguodala since she was a Nugget fan. No, oh, I said to Gallo Gallinari. Mm. Was, he was in a nice little suit the other day. Um, it was not tailored very well, though. It it's was hard to when you. It 16. was big as hell. Was, you, but he's sixty. Why he had a big shirt? <laughs> Why is it big? <laughs> Um, let's go to the Western Conference, man. Uh, we got a, th- a two-two series, which is uh, all the home teams in one. War- Warriors Kings. Yes. Yep. Uh, the their the season hasn't started, or the series hasn't started because the road team ain't won a game. Two but here, two here. Big injuries, KB. Big injuries for sure. De'Aaron Fox is out for Game Five. Man. Yes, he is. No, no, he's not. He's just dealing with a finger. They say he's gonna try. He's going to try? Yeah, they say he's going to try. Report that this is out. why you let the host be the host. You jumped on. He be so. Th- <laughs> bro, you have this habit of being so thirsty. Like you On the random things, too, though. Yeah, like, Hold on, Kimmy. <laughs> I know you're about to say it, but I have to. <laughs> I'll be like, damn. So he um, broke the top of his. Um, I don't remember if it was index or his, uh, middle finger, regardless. He played the last five minutes of the fourth quarter with the broke finger but it comes out he's broke and he's gonna try to go as he should because he had a dominant fourth quarter bro exactly. yeah. hit the that shot. three that yeah. three they they hit after they called that or oh, they faked that timeout well not faked it but the chris weber timeout it was a uh, a great game 
It, it was. was Maybe the greatest right game there. in the playoffs. This bro. has been the greatest series. That was the greatest game of the playoffs, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But so, well, the Jimmy Butler performance was kind of crazy, yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. especially when he hit the three and Drew Holiday yeah, hit the three. And then, oh. Just know we getting some crazy performances. <laughs> it feels again like. Games. If we're getting that Steph back again, just just like that, all that like I got to do this shit, Steph. You know, I and like I, that. Uh, Draymond and De'Aaron Fox was going at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When they put Draymond on, on De'Aaron too, that shit was. And definitely. then they had the little clip of them talking. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He was like old ass nigga or some yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He called him. He a said, bitch. Oh, he I was like, called him a bitch. I don't think he said old. I thought. I think he said whole ass nigga. Yeah, I, I just so. seen. He, I think he was. Uh, I just seen the part. He was like, I don't give a fuck. I think. And then he was like, whole ass nigga, old ass nigga, some shit like that. But I like that. And you know what? Draymond came off the bench. It was like, I'm Jordan Poole now. I'm taking <laughs> 15 shots. Yes, bro. And they were like, a lot of them are bunnies that he just missed. You and never his reaction is the shots. same every fucking, like he's surprised that he missed. But Draymond, you do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest? Of course. I'm scared for Sacramento. I am too. They were supposed to steal one of those games, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm terrified for them. <laughs> I think they're gonna lose. They should. I, they, I picked them to lose, but I now I, I really feel this, like this. If there was any game to steal, it was the last one. The Warriors opened the door a thousand times, mm-hmm. and the Kings always made the young play, the bonehead play, the, the bad shot, the turnovers, the bro. turnover. Looking like the Warriors. The I couldn't believe. Play when he just threw it out of bounds. I couldn't yeah. believe some of those turnovers, man. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And then Harrison you Barnes like trying to go for the father. two for one. Harrison Barnes. <laughs> yeah. You're the vet. <laughs> they got the. <laughs> they got Fox the did the same Murray. shit. It was like a minute left, and he just took a like he had a crazy shot. With yeah, a like a left. side but step three pointer. Like, what are you doing? No, he had one. He was going to the basket on two niggas. Oh uh, yeah. He no. He missed a wide open layup, and then I remember this play specifically. He missed a wide open. No, it's Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray missed a wide open layup. Fast break. With the Warriors, two on two, Steph Curry's one of the two. And for some reason, Kevin Herter tried to pick up the ball with the other person and left Steph Curry wide open on the wing. And Steph Curry wide open on the wing is money. That's a layup. It was a five point swing because you missed the layup. And then, so, you know, it was what a lot of moments. irritated the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. They had like a steal or something and they were ahead. And Sabonis tried to dribble and Draymond stripped it when he could have just dumped yes, it down. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. That was a, a very lot, yes. big one, man. Yeah. That makes it a two-possession game. You get it, you just dump it, and he dunks it, but he tried to dribble. Draymond said, give me this shit. And then that's big when, time isn't that when Then they had also a play with Jordan Poole going one on like four, and he gets a layup on Sabonis. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Was, Jordan, <laughs> I think that's been another just factor for the Warriors. Sorry, when Jordan Poole has been – he's been more – playing. He's been more better in terms of just putting the ball in the cup. Like, especially you know, when Steph goes to sit on the bench, mm-hmm. he, he could pick up some of the scoring. Those stuff. words don't go together. More if you're going to use yet. more, you don't need the You could have just said he's been better. He's, he's been, been better. better. He's been better. So they got to teach you how to wipe your ass, how to talk, how to take showers. I teach him all the other stuff, though. Okay. Yeah. Like, how to how to get thumped. No, nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to do that. But no I think, confidence or shit. Yeah, but what's also crazy is the Draymond effect on Sabonis. The bonus isn't even taking shots. Not even. It's not even just Draymond. Kevon Looney, Looney too. Yeah. Though they those two have been locking up the All NBA <laughs> third center. Like he's nobody to the point to where he doesn't even look at the best. Sometimes he's just literally looking to pass. Did you see that play when um he got that off? Sabonis got an offensive foul on Looney. Like he literally drove. He tried through. to like yeah, full moved. back move to the and then to he the had basket. the nerve to do this. Yeah. What? Kevon Bro, Looney took that shit to the chin yes, too. Yes. Looney, Looney has been fabulous. Yeah, mm-hmm. Looney has been fabulous, and I—that's what Draymond was saying. Like, I, I called Steve and told him I'll come off the bench because that's what leadership is about. Loon been killing, but I'm Draymond gonna let you know. He, he yeah, did. he gonna let you know it was him all the time. Uh, I do love that he did take the like initiative to do that. He didn't want to mess up the chemistry of the starting lineup that just won that game. No. But we already knew he was gonna end up. Being playing a lot of minutes, playing anyway. the minutes that he was on, <laughs> it didn't. It, I mean, I can't say it didn't change anything, but it didn't feel like it was super impactful. And to have Jordan start there. the next game. I don't no, know. They might go that. back. They might stick to it. And they then, on just because half. they can't win at the they on the road on the anyway. Half though, so yeah. Um, I, I literally ooh. had to say it. No, nah, I know. <laughs> Ninety nine. Chris Bryant just dropped. Um, who damn. Cares? I is it a moment? Oh, is it like a chemistry? Um, chemistry Cubs card. What you was about to say? Who cares? Chris uh, Bryant. Yeah. He, he got a nice swing. White Sox suck. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm be honest with you too, P. I, I agree though. Well, I'm a little bit. I'm not a little bit. I'm really afraid for the Sacramento Kings. Um, just with De'Aaron having this injury that we don't know how it's gonna hurt him in the full course of an 82. I'm sorry, 48 minute game. And with Steph playing like he is, and Sabonis being put in a torture chamber like he is, it's like guys with uh, hand injuries who get to the basket a lot. I'm always worried about yeah. guys with hand but then injuries again, who get to the basket a lot. I'm always <laughs> <good>. <laughs> we just gonna start doing it to because this is because uh, he's talking about one dude that really don't care. Draymond one, Green gonna swipe. We them will get there, Mike. <laughs> My gosh, man! <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> I'm I'm still just bad fruit, bro. I don't think it's gonna be like that. I, I think that uh, the Kings, I feel like they've just been really off. I feel like they've been right there, but they haven't been playing the best basketball they they've been playing all season long. So I feel like that's something they can hang on. But the Warriors, they're they're right there now. I felt like that thing, like the the questions we have with the Warriors, it feels like they're kind of answering it with these two games back. So I, that's where I'm worried at. But the Kings, I, I'm still favoring the Kings right here. I don't think they've answered the biggest question, which is can you win on the road? True. And so far they haven't done it. True. Because uh, let's say they do win the series. They still might, well, not might. I'm pretty confident that the Lakers are advancing. They got the Lakers. You get, you, get, you got to at least steal one in L.A., <clears throat> um, which is, again, possible. It's not like this is some yeah, impenetrable well, force. Yeah, you 12 points is definitely possible. But we'll get there. Yeah. I'm leaning on Steph. Steph got to give me one of them away games. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, do they play tonight or is that tomorrow? I know tomorrow's schedule Tomorrow is ridiculous. The tomorrow there's four games. It's the Lakers. Yeah, why did, why did they the do that? I don't know. And they say like 6, 6.30, then 8, then 8.30. So, yeah, they can't, obviously they can't predict what series they're going to do what. But we got Celtics-Hawks tonight. We got Timberwolves-Nuggets tonight and Clippers-Suns tonight. We could see three series and tonight. And then tomorrow it's – Tomorrow's bus. Knicks, Cavs. It's Lakers, Grizzlies. It's Heat, Bucks, and it's Warriors, Kings. Like it's the Damn. games. Four games on a Wednesday night. That's mm-hmm. crazy. That's crazy, right? Why would they jam pack four games into one night? Yeah, they got to get it done, though. I guess. Uh, all right, Mike, it's time. Let's talk about the Lakers. He's been hinting at it all. He's been ready, man. Three-one series lead, LA. Um, game four was in another incredible game. I would say fun game back and forth where LeBron was passing the ball too goddamn much in the fourth quarter, but then hit the biggest shot of the game. And then when it's an overtime, it hit another one of the biggest shots of the game. D'Angelo Russell fouled out, but he had three back to back threes when y'all were down by what, 10 points, I want to say? Mm-hmm. Three back to back threes. Made... And y'all won. How you feeling? I'm, feel- I'm feeling good that we won the game, but it's a lot of signs that I don't know how long this shit is going to keep up, man. Mm. So you have the. I'm riding a high. Okay. I'm riding a high. Okay. And I think that's a good way to put it for this legacy scene because looking out, it's just like LeBron James, he's having these moments, but we can't, I can't really expect him to do this. He had for, a 20 20 game. And he, he led did. Y'all, and he led listen, y'all minutes. He played, he played like 45 40. So he played a lot of minutes. I, it's going to be a lot. It's still a long way until you get, for one, out this series because you still have one more game. I worry about second round, second three. I'm worried about the future, even if we get out this first round, because he's logging a lot. A lot what would match. you do if y'all lost this series? If we lost this series? Oof. If y'all were the team that dropped the 3 1 lead? She, she would hurt. <laughs> she would hurt, because honestly, you know, the Grizzlies have been bang- First of all, they missed Steve Adams. They're already banged up. Ja got a banged up hand, and like, you should be doing this, but you have games where Anthony Davis has you know, nine points or 13, whatever he has. Like, you, can, those are unacceptable type games, you know. Games where Xavier Tillman has 21, you look at those like, you you don't look at that during your season and predict that to happen because it, it shouldn't happen, you know. Yeah, I don't – sometimes, like, I don't understand what I'm getting from Anthony Davis. And I hate that I have an all-NBA type of talent that I don't know what I'm getting from him on a yeah. day-to-day basis. It, it's really, though, like a double-ended sword, though, because, like yeah. I said, LeBron is – he can't. He just literally can't. But his body won't let him do it at this age. Like you can still have LeBron moments, but it's hard to expect this man to dominate for forty-eight minutes. Anthony Davis. In one game he got thirty. One game you he probably got say the same thing about his body not allowing him. His body. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I'm just honestly, it's going to that Bam shit where it's like, I don't know what I'm getting my offensively, but the defense better be there. Yeah. You know. And the defense has been there. For it's Anthony been there Davis. for sure. And Anthony Davis for his career has been one of the best playoff performance ever. Like just by the numbers, he always has been a thirty plus point per game score in the playoffs. Uh, un- until now, 
where you had a couple games. Yeah, remember when he was with the Pelicans and they didn't have to Rid- go against the Warriors? Ridiculous game you know, one. He lose. put up what he put up in that game. I'm gonna look it up. Mm-hmm. He was you ridiculous. Had like Fifty point double doubles <laughs> and stuff with like five blocks. Like his stat lines would be crazy, but like mm-hmm. you're not really getting those performances from playoffs me. without Boogie when they beat your team. And that's been crazy. That was before you was a fan. So far, I feel like the Lakers haven't played their best ball, and it's it's them that feel like it's been the the role players that's been sure. stepping it up. Austin Reeves has been playing really good. Rui yeah. Hachimura is probably one of the hottest players in the in the in the playoffs right now. That's very true. You know, and it hasn't even been just a mid range. He's been lighting it up for three. So, shout out to who? Shout, shout out to, to Kendrick Nunn. Shout out to Kendrick Nunn in a couple of second rounders. Second rounders, because that's all it took. Shout out to Phil Handy. You think he changed it around that much in that small amount of time? Yeah. Uh, throughout his career, Anthony Davis has averaged 26 points per game, 26, 10, and 3. Uh, he's always been great. But this series, he's averaging 19. But it's, he's missing bunnies, 19, too, though. Yeah. Like, he's at the rim missing. So that's like – he, he should be making one those, right? around jumper a game. I'm like oh. – the one, the one uh, mid range oh, shot he had hit late in the game, I was like, that shit was kind of lucky, bro. Because that was like, <laughs> I even remember you saying that's lucky. That shit was it's been lucky. fucked the Lakers. It's going to be fucked the Lakers. But I am happy because I can't lose. If y'all win, y'all upset at the Grizzlies who did all that damn talking. And they good they at come, West. If they come back and beat y'all, then y'all lost. So I want to talk about how. <laughs> I'm playing with house money. <laughs> I'm annoyed with Dylan Brooks now. Uh, Dylan Brooks, how you going to. Play the villain all year. What's that? And now all of a sudden you want to run from the smoke. What's that Kevin Hart mean? Mop, he hurt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what he on, bro. Bro literally talking about the media is making him look like a villain all of a sudden. Uh-huh. When he's done it his damn self. Yeah. He ain't like we out there just construing his words and making him sound something exactly. different. Than he's literally doing it. Yeah. He's did it all himself. And now, all him. And now it's, he the, loved it's the media him. He, telling him he loved them microphones too until he lose. Yeah. Now, yeah. now he want to do his interview. You know what he's the, now he don't want to do the interview. You know Shout the out to Desmond Bain for doing his though. Uh-huh. A coward. What no, what is he today? De- <laughs> 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 de- <laughs> <laughs> when they back against the wall, bro, now, you so. got no filter with this shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You know he is a coward. <laughs> <laughs> what do I be saying? What is he doing right now? I don't know. I, I might he, he, want, he rather have somebody now? call me. A, oh. He running down. <laughs> 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 he running down there, man. I thought with Dylan Brooks was about to walk. Yeah. I thought he. I thought he was a guy that would walk down there. <laughs> but not only is he running, he's on a fucking electrical scooter. Yeah. Hey, his career in Memphis is over after this series. It's raps. Yeah, it's going to free. Bro, they, he's that veteran at the He that, got subbed he's out. He's the vet that The Rock is going to get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> he got subbed out. They started bringing back. They started coming back. He just, Why did Tyus Jones only play a handful of minutes? Probably because of job. I, I think that them they playing play together, together. I think that this series has been rough as far as like the numbers go. Um, but Dil- the reason I just don't like watching Dylan Brooks, is he takes too many fucking shots for somebody that can't shoot. The air balled and shit. It's just, and, and it's aesthetically ugly too. So you add yeah. an ugly looking jump shot with bad percentages and a bunch of talk, it's like, bro, I'm, it's fuck. Derek, who is his uh, wrestling comp? Uh, I don't know. No? Okay. No. Because I've been thinking about that. Because he, again, he is the heel. He, no matter what he say, people trying to put it on him. You've been talking. A, I can't remember, but there's a corner in the NFL. Oh, I think he played for the Giants. Eli, Eli Apple. Oh, Eli Apple. Eli. They that always get cooked, talking, but he yeah. loves talking. He plays for the Bengals now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's his NFL comp. Yeah, right there, Eli Apple. So it'll be like a heel that always get their ass whooped. Yeah. It's all, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but um, you know that one play, though. They're going to talk about that forever, though. What play? What play? I'm just saying those type of people that always oh, get cooked. Oh, that yeah. That one yeah, time they yeah. stopped you. And he, I mean, his defense is good. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. No. It's good. You can't deny the defense is good, but it's just like the antics <laughs> and the talking. Yeah. I know people in Memphis, not like no, no people, but like some people that I listen to in Memphis that have been saying all season long that they just, they want him off the team and they offered him and four first round picks to get Mikael Bridges, like from the Brooklyn Nets when he got traded there. Um, and obviously the Brooklyn Nets said no. But damn, how things could be different if it was Mikkel Bridges in the series and not Dylan Brooks. I want to give a quick birthday shout out to my boy Nate uh, Nathan. Shout, shout out to out Nathan. The T runner. Happy beat day. Uh, and then also shout out to Marshall Boomer. Happy birthday to those boys. Is he a producer? That's Metro Boomer. Oh, that's his little cousin. Oh. Marshall Boomer. Yeah. So yeah, happy birthday, my boys. <laughs> he the future. 
Marshall and Nathan. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, Happy birthday. Yeah, it's been a fun series to watch, though. John Morant scares the hell out of me. He's already been a dude that's been nicked up all of his career. But he has done what Derrick Rose did in his early seasons where, like, struggling to find a way to land and anticipate intensify it to a hundred because Derrick yeah. Rose it was more like oh he's he, powerful he right his his landing with his legs is too much John Moran don't even think about his legs landing no more he think he out there playing slam ball with us exactly <laughs> and then he he get called for a charge and he's like this or there's a no call and he's like going back on defense power he's very OC he's definitely a very out of control it scares the, the fuck out of me as because obviously he's super talented <laughs> that like one of these times that fall is going to be too damn bad that he can't pop himself back Damon up Brian, from. that that one was the one I was like, yeah. yeah and it, it looks yeah. even worse now because he has his hand wrapped up and it looks like he's constantly falling on it but he always making that's faces. always yeah, that's yeah. always been a thing with John all he does is make faces with that hand <laughs> <laughs> He only scored fifty with that hand. It's a, that's part of the lore. I'm t- <laughs> I'm telling you, it's part of the lore to have an injured body part and then do something great with that injured body part. It's so like, yeah. yeah, he he had twenty five points in the fourth quarter in Game Three with a broken hand. But when that hand here, one fucker can't give me eleven. <laughs> <laughs> now watch if De'Aaron Fox go out there and have a thirty point win. It's gonna be like he did it with a broken finger. It's gonna be a part of De'Aaron Fox forever, even if they lose a series. Remember when he when he I went blame, against the Warriors and dropped thirty? Because people run with that with the flu, flu game, game shit. shit. <laughs> they run with that shit. Dude, there's a play where Draymond swipes at the ball and De'Aaron Fox and he hits De'Aaron Fox and people are gonna say, that. "Oh, absolutely." It's gonna now be all hey, he did it on purpose. And knowing knowing know what Draymond, knowing the player Draymond is, nine times ten, he taking that swipe at the oh, end. Oh, sure. He's he he taking that he swipe. He got that update. He was like, "Got him." He taking that swipe. I'm pretty sure most basketball players react like you're naturally gonna react to swipe at the ball that's right there, mm-hmm. like. And it's not dirty. I might just hit your hand. Nah, you a dirty dude. A little bit. Is it if always dirty? Like that at the YMCA, you fucking bogus. <laughs> yeah, that's bogus. Is it bogus? <laughs> so, because this shit is always having a basketball. Somebody rolls their ankle, and now it's like, hey, you, we making him play defense. No, that's, 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 that's good basketball. Right. That's good basketball. But right. like when it's an actual injury that you're going at, like smacking Bro. at a hand, that's whole day. <laughs> I never forget. I was a kid. Yeah. And this dude, this a grown man, came to the park with crutches. And he got off the crutches and got in the game. And my dad was like, bro, if you don't, you don't score on him, you in trouble. <laughs> you better fuck him up. Don't let nobody get off no crutches and guard you. Who is bro's and doctor? I felt bad. I was like, fuck it. Pops don't feel like you playing. I'm going to. For <laughs> <laughs> real, though. Why we did the same shit with D. We do the same shit with D. Mills. We said, bro, that nigga just had hip, hip surgery. surgery. Don't let him fucking guard you, D. Mills. What it's is, just. What was the result? Dude guarded him. Dude guarded him. We're not going down this path. But hey, if it was me guard, if I was guarding him, nigga would have had twelve and ten. Oh hell yeah, he 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 be trying to put you through the fucking cemented walls of the gym. I be, I that, be that's your back, biggest rival, I guess. So. I be looking back and might be on the floor. <laughs> oh, um, oh shit! Anything else to say about this series? Is it? What percentage do y'all Thank feel like you. it's done? Or I feel like okay, 8%. Come back? Good 8%. I 8%. think it ends in game Shot six in LA. Okay. So they get the one, they get one at Memphis home. Get, and like, uh oh, here they come. And then they look, okay. Yeah. I can I see don't that. Oh, man. Brown might come out and do that thing in Memphis. I just so. shut it all down. If LeBron Hopefully. put on a master class. If I'm, it could be I'm like another it. game three, minus the that little Josh shit that happened in the end where the man was literally looking like he was unstoppable. Mm hmm. I, I think that would yeah, be a good way to close it game out. Game three was with nine points in the first quarter. They were it was real nasty, rough for dancing. It was times in this game where LeBron was just shaking his head at AD. He just looked frustrated. It now, was, yeah. Hopefully we we'll just get an AD Shit, performance. I hope he gave a kiss to D'Angelo Russell on the cheek because them three threes was crazy. <laughs> real yeah. ridiculous. Crazy. Threes. Crazy. Well, after the first couple games, he they haven't really done shit. Yeah. He hasn't. So the have if want to foul out after hitting those three threes is even more crazy. <laughs> I think it's probably probably for the better. <laughs> Uh, for you, real. you had your moment. Now go sit your ass down and let the defenders come in. But no, Dennis Schroeder was trying to get his game away. He had like three turnovers in yeah. He's between been, yeah. fourth quarter and overtime. He was struggling to just get us into a good possession. Mm-hmm. But I think also Grizzlies were trying to, they was really turning up the heat too to, to end it out. It was just funny to I'm see I'm just glad we pulled like, it out. Everybody was so gassed. Yeah. yeah. Brown was trying to hope that somebody else could get their shit off at least once. And that's what I'm saying, bro. I, I don't know what to expect because it's like I, if he's playing this amount of minutes, 
I I, I can kind of understand why he's like, hey, Austin Reeves, you close this shit out. You Dennis yeah, shoot. Yeah, twenty three big ones. He did. He did. The most important one was the one that tied it up, honestly. And high that was off like, glass. yeah, and that was that was a tough shot too, because like you said, it was high off the glass, and uh, I seen it, people talking about it like, man, he should have he should have done the right thing and just fouled LeBron because. Two free throws for LeBron in that situation might have been harder for the, harder oh, than why that Why does this remind me? I had a dream and we was hooping. And I oh, hit a three man. off the glass. <laughs> I hit like a big ass three off the glass and I ain't give a fuck. I mean, it went in. But. Oh, for sure. You had a shot off glass. You just like, shit, that shit went in. <laughs> like that Brooke on Lopez defense. one. No, nah, with that Brooke Lopez one in that game. Oh, he yeah. He hit that yeah, one yeah, off yeah, glass. Yeah, 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 Jimmy fouled one. him, too. Yeah. Jimmy fouled him. Jimmy definitely fouled him. Shout out to Caleb. Um, and they was talking shit, too. Not talking shit, but they were laughing. They, they were laughing, laughing about, they about it. it. Nuggets. Timberwolves. Man. Anthony, Anthony Edwards. Edwards. Man. Shout out to Anthony Edwards, man. He's, yeah, he said it's the first of four. He won't finna let them get swept. But, uh, I swear, that move he did at the end had to get everybody oh, out their seats. Yeah. yeah. So Aaron so Gordon is yeah. still, I think, shaking a little bit yeah. after that. Oh, that was a snatchback, not a snatchback, right? Yeah. It was a snatchback. Yeah. And I, I be trying my hardest not to ruin the games for Mike because his TV is behind because he's illegally streaming it. And no, I'm not <laughs> illegally streaming it, by the way. He had to clarify that immediately. <laughs> but that was a moment that I was so reactionary. I was like, what the fuck? No, because Aaron Gordon, of course, really good defender. Yeah. But in that moment in time, he did it not exist. He did not exist. And, of course, post-game interview, Anthony Edwards looked like a real leader, you know, yeah. not talking about himself having however many points he had, but talking about Nikhil Alexander Walker hitting the two big threes down the stretch, or Mike Conley doing this, and Ru- he did give Rudy some love. Um, he said, it, he also was like, "We told Nikhil, you already hit two threes without even taking that many. Shoot the ball more. Shoot the ball more. Yeah, yeah. keep shooting it." He said, "We was hanging out at at Cat's house." Yeah, playing, I mean, that's, that's playing team. Cat. That's that's yeah. That's the he team. He said, "I already knew Cat was gonna come out with some energy." When I went to his house last ma- night. This is what movies are made. I'm of. so happy they didn't interview him, bro. I'm so happy Cat they get. This is what bro. movies are made of. I will say he did say he did a good job on Jokic. <laughs> oh my god! But Jokic still getting. You know what I Jokic told him? had 43 you, points. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I told him? We're in Minnesota now. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, yeah. Let's keep let's keep cat mic'd up. For We're Minnesota <laughs> now. <laughs> what do you do against the Lakers? I'm ten toes down. I'm ten yeah, toes. I'm, ten, I'm out here. I'm ten toes down. But no, we just want to go out there and play hard. Um, <laughs> I feel like if he does it again, at that point, he has to just be trolling for the internet. <laughs> Because he has to know that he's being talked about at that point. I'm ready to wrap this up so I can watch this shit. <laughs> I told him we're in minutes so we didn't now. Shout out to Ant for making it more than a sweep, but tonight might be that's the night. Yeah, that's just gonna be over. It's with. back in unless unless t- he put on another crazy. It's back in Denver. Denver don't yeah. lose at home often. That's the altitude. That the altitude definitely helps. Uh yeah. but yeah. Unless, Next I mean Jamal Murray and them probably gonna play better, so you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like, you know. It's the series is over, Derek. Let's be real. Yeah. That's okay. I, I, and Anthony Edwards says differently, though. I'm okay with them losing. He, he would be the first person in history to come back down 3-0. <laughs> so, good luck, my well, friend. I'm cool with just having the best moment in the series be that snatch back on Aaron Gordon. I'm <laughs> yeah. cool with that. <laughs> is that how we going to remember it? Not from the winning team doing some shit. It's the one play that the other team did. It's like the George shit. You know, when he was getting his ass bust by Boston, we were still praising Jordan. <laughs> he had 63 in a game and lost the series. And the game. <laughs> the funniest coward. He said, bro, they asked me about me and you. Gideon said, what? He said, they really did. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you don't remember when he was like, they really did. No, uh, when he was uh. talking to Gideon, he like, bro, they asked me about you at media. And Judy Allen was like, what? And Kat was like, they really did. <laughs> Y'all what? Was like, no. Oh, man. Oh, this one. Free, free GD on. Yeah, I was about to say, he's in No, 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 he's out. No, he's out. He's out. No, he's out. Oh. oh. Not this one. <laughs> no, he, his voice is crazy. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> shout out to, shout out to Big Cat. Shout out to him. Garfield. The Big Purr. You did. Per, I'm dead. Oh, you he seen his game attack, right? Not kidding around. No. That's not bad. Yeah, I think that's I, I dope. like it. I like it. That's that's cool. That's cool. Not, not kidding, kidding around. around. It's cool. I get guess. it? Because he ain't kidding. got kids. Yeah. I, I hope a big <laughs> <laughs> He just be saying yeah to I was about to say, I hope Big Sexy Ball and not criticizing somebody gamer tag. 
<laughs> Are we play? We were playing trios on MLB, and somebody in your chat didn't know his gamer tag. He's like, I'm actually not surprised at Derek's gamer tag. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, ch- you gotta change it because your life changed. Big sexy ball. Was All it? three of those things are still true. Right. Oh, he gotta make his shit kidding around. <laughs> <laughs> Or is he still? A, I don't know if, know if he's a baller anymore. He's not a baller. I don't think you're all baller. A baller. You're a family man. Big sexy. Father. You can be a family man and be a baller. Big sexy father. That's true. Big sexy father. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I must say, man, I I had fun in your gender reveal. Thank you, man. I appreciate all y'all for pulling up. But the funniest shit ever, and I kept telling this to Dana, is she even had the crack of laugh. I like seeing you as a dad. I'm proud. Of you, <laughs> you know yeah, I guess so. You know, I don't think I've ever told you that as a cousin. I'm proud. I love seeing you be a father, but you as a little ass dad. I am a little dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that stroller. I was like, look at this little ass dad. <laughs> Even when he holding her, she she look big as hell in his arms. She, hey, she's a big baby. She's a big baby. Yeah, it's okay though. You make it work. She I got no choice. It's not gonna right change now. anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, some uh, some, some funny thing. bro. Y'all know when I we still I got one last the, series to talk about. Bring that up. Oh, bring it up because I, I we talk about Suns Clippers. About. Oh, oh they, beating up, Russell, on, they beating up on the injured team, <laughs> clapping and shit like they doing. Something. Shout out to Russell running. Westbrook for putting up a fight. I yeah. do think that these last two games we've seen a lot more from the Suns as far as like them being more comfortable offensively, which is good for the next series against Denver. Um. But Russell Westbrook's resurgence is the real story of the yeah, yeah. series. Um, he, he, people thought it was no stars around and his team was going to fall. I'm and, so and curious. Russ is just keeping him in the game. Off his offseason. What, ty- what type of money is he going to get? It's so what tough, teams bro. are interested? Because he's, what, he's increasing I, his value. But this, this is what I talk, talk Oh, the vet. Bring him back this to Houston. I, this is what I talk oh, about, shit. though, y'all. This is what I talk about. I've asked y'all this question several times. Mm-hmm. The Clippers aren't going to have the money for they him. They just, yeah, they but won't. But they're who he resurged with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, what do you do? Do you go and chase that bag and go back to where you just was when you're out of place? You were the team that don't have a role for you. You're the scapegoat now, and now you back to where you just didn't want to be? Or do you take a highly crazy, stupid cut to go stay in a place that got you back relevant and popping, that helped you be what you want to be? I mean, Russell Westbrook is rich. He's, yeah, he's yeah. rich. Sneaker deal, contracts. He I think, clearly wants I think he's to, top 10 in um, money yeah, made yeah, in money NBA. Made. He yeah. clearly wants to be and have an extended career more than probably getting an extra, what, $7 million, that $10 million. Yeah. So it's like. The one place I can see him really fit is Washington. Why do that again? Why? I don't even think that was even a fit, though. Why do that again? Because it was one of those places where you saw, like, him be Russell. Yeah, it's just this place what where place he can be real. Over the last few years has been more better than uh, this Russell Westbrook's team. 15th all time in um, money made in the NBA, which is still ridiculous. This Clipper team fully <laughs> It's the best team, team that got yeah. space for him. They, they 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 have a chance to compete as long as they're healthy. Mm. If, which Even is a if bit they're of not deal. extremely healthy, this Kawhi shit is just super, super crazy. Because with Kawhi, this is an t- entirely different season. Yeah, there are potential Let's thing give to go to them the Paul George. <laughs> F it. Paul George is hurt, whatever. Whatever. But with Kawhi, this looked very different. Um, it gives you that chance. You had people that supported you and wanted you to be there. Paul yeah. George put his neck on the line for you to be a Clipper, and you talked about that to Chris Haynes in the Bleach Report interview. Tyron Lewis coached well and put you in a position to succeed. I think it has to be something where they have to try to make this work. Yeah. And I think, I think, and I truly think, and KB has been asking all year, I really do think next year is the last year of this Clipper thing. I do too. I don't think Paul George already, getting traded. I already kind of got that, that feeling. Because it was like halfway through the season, they were already bringing out uh, reports about like Paul George. This could be the year. If shit don't happen, they were going to be looking to shop him. So I'm not surprised because they had so much expectation. You think about it like on paper, this team should be a team that's trying to compete champion, uh, compete for a championship every year. Yeah. Like they should be right there. They but should it be just, fighting for their second ring right now. It just hasn't happened, but I think the thing about them that makes them different than Brooklyn and other places is that it's only been injury. There has mm-hmm. not been any drama where Paul George or Kawhi is getting to it. They're getting suspended. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just been injury. Besides the three one thing in a bubble, it's literally just been injuries. 
And anytime you see one of them on the court, it gives that ownership and that front office hope and belief to try it again the next year. Because mm-hmm. what other option do you have? You're going to trade one prematurely and then not be as good. But it's like when Paul George was out there by himself, he finished off the Jazz and competed heavily against the Suns, who went on to play it in, in, the, in the championship. Yep. And without Paul George this year, Kawhi made this interesting with Russell Westbrook. And both of those situations lead you to believe that if they're both on the court, they easily go into the finals at the least. I don't want to say easily win the championship, yeah, but no, they easily no, go into you. the finals. And I think part of that, because I, I think we see a lot of the best basketball players from the other guys too, like Norman Powell, whatever, when it's one style, because there's just more shots to go around and people, you know, get to feed. But I like that situation, especially with Tyron Lou for Russell, just because Tyron Lou is he's not afraid to like be experimental with the lineups and he really does like those small ball lineups and to Russell's credit, like he could find shooters and he could still get to the rim and do all these type of things. So those type of lineups, I think he thrives. And especially when stars are out, you know, Russell Westbrook likes to show up. Yeah. It's just, this is like the Russell Westbrook that you thought you would see with the Lakers. Like, you could see LeBron and AD low managing doing what they need to do throughout the year, and then Russ will like take over games and still win you games. But now you're seeing that, oh shit, maybe that didn't work. But he goes to the Clippers, and it's like he's doing everything that you thought he would do with the Lakers. So it's like it's just a change of scenery, is, and he has a different voice. He was on a fifty theater. million dollar contract, and we couldn't put that stuff around. We couldn't put that yeah, stuff around. True, him. He he's on a middle to bad players instead of Norman Powell. Yeah, or he ain't had Rui on his team. Yeah, Rui yet. Well, he had Rui. Oh, not for long. Wash- in Washington. Not for long. That's what I was oh, yeah, 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 true. Oh. I forgot. We was uh, the Washington Lakers for a minute. Too. Yeah, if y'all win a ring this year, you got to give one to the Washington <laughs> Wizards because they need one desperately. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. I think only time will tell what his priorities, where his priorities lie or where the other 29 GMs are interested because the Clippers would 100% want to bring him back. Yeah. No doubt about it, obviously, mm-hmm. on a minimum because that's all they could afford, but – um, what the other 29 GMs think? It's a good question. Yeah. He's going back to Houston on a if big payday. If he goes payday. back to Houston, that'll be crazy. On a big payday. They got money. They do got it's money. It's like they bring back Harden and Russ. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that, would be, <laughs> that would be crazy. Um, That'd be doing some shit just to do it. Yeah. Those are the playoffs so far, though. Tonight we got some games, and we're going to see some series ends. I, w- I would believe out of the three games, yeah. at least yeah, one yeah, of yeah. those yeah, yeah. you see in. Um, Celtics will end. Oh, yeah, no DeJounte Murray and stuff. Maybe they're better without DeJounte. If they better without DeJounte, that would be crazy. Future Chicago Bull, DeJounte Murray. Is that something you're speaking into existence? Nope. I just, anybody that can hoop a little bit, I want to see him in Chicago because it's better than the alternative. (laughs) (laughs) Bro, do y'all have reoccurring dreams? Absolutely. Well, not anymore. I used to, though. I used to have the same dream. So I've always had, I've always had it for just as long as I can remember. Like, it was times where, I would always be in my auntie's house playing like Nintendo for some reason. It was a reoccurring dream. Then it was one where it was like always running from the police. I don't know why, but it would always when it, when it would happen. Running from some of your dreams doesn't it mean something? Do y'all okay? That I was haven't my looked next it up. Question. I haven't looked it up. But I do need y'all to. believe in that? Like to a degree, uh, yeah, a little bit. Because I feel like a little bit because it's subconscious, subconsciously in your head. Because like the only mind. thing that happens reoccurrently in my dream is that I lose my teeth. That That's happened, happened to me before. That happened to That's, me the other night. I was like, for some reason, I was young and I was like, my tooth was falling out and I was trying to pull it out. Mm-hmm. See, I've had that happen before, happen before, but it's not a reoccurring dream. For and me. it felt real too. Like it felt like I was yes. real. My tooth was coming out. That's happened out. to me with my hair before too. When I had like my dreads and shit. Yeah, you felt like your dreads was coming out. Not that they came out, but like I woke up and it's like somebody cut my hair. Absolutely, off. I've had that dream a hundred times as well. Oh wow, yeah. pisses me off. Now, now my new reoccurring dream is, and it's I feel like this has been going on for like a year now, but it's just like it's a dream, so you don't really think about it too much. But like it's always a dog biting my hand now. I, I don't what? know what the fuck it, That's it means. Oddly, specific, but it's just like though. So because like my cat, obviously, like I play with my cat and like she nibbles at my hand. I've never been bitten by a dog, so like I always feel that same resemblance to like a cat biting me, but it's like a, just a dog like on my hand. So, do, should I just Google all of these meanings right now in the show? Yeah. So the it says right here the most common interpretation of having your teeth fall out in the dream has to do with deep personal loss. This can be related to death of a loved one, uh, loss of a partnership slash marriage. Mm. Doesn't relate to me. Mm-hmm. So that can't be right. Luckily for me, my family is really healthy. We haven't had lost in the families. Shit, in almost a decade, over a decade now. So we we we've been good on that front. Um, 
partnerships and marriages, shit, I'm getting married this year. So if I'm already having teeth falling out dreams and that's the interpretation before the marriage, then some scary shit. You said dog. Yeah, it says it. having a dog bite you in a dream can indicate internal aggression, such as vision. Such a vision helps you get in touch with your impulse and attempt to acknowledge and control it. Mm. What's that saying about you, Mikey? Read that first sentence to me again, because that first sentence was very interesting. Ha- having a dog bite you can having a dog bite you in a dream can indicate internal aggression. Ain't he the thug of the group? I don't cry <laughs> to the thug of the group. <laughs> 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 no. I always say, but no I'm, a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Mm. Okay. All right. You have some internal aggression you need to face. You know what will help with that internal aggression? If we, if you got a massage occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that everything is not... Oh, never mind. No, but it says, when in a dream, a dog bites your hand, which I feel like is more specific, it signifies disloyalty and betrayal. Who betrays you? Are you betraying other people? Which one is worse? He betraying us. Damn. No. <laughs> I guess my mind speaking to me, you man. Go I gotta go. Sports. Oh, shit. I I think that I think that might be true. Actually, I had I had a dream. This was a this was a while ago. It was it was a girl that actually did me dirty back in college. Mm-hmm. I was napping on the couch and I had a dream about that situation, and I was dreaming that a snake like swallowed my arm what hole. The fuck? It freaked me out so much that I woke up in the middle. Like I woke up from the dream. I was standing up yelling. And I was waving my like getting arm, the, getting the snake off of you. And I knocked the TV off the like oh, TV no, this stand. Is a big moment. It was like it was like a whole it was a whole thing. Nothing happened to the TV. Jeez. I was able to like grab it, but I literally and my sister came and she was like, "What the hell?" It that freaked Damn. me out. But I think that's like I guess like yeah, if an animal is biting your arm or hand, betrayal See, that always, might be real skeptical of stuff like that and like astrology and all of that astrology i feel like a hundred percent well, well you just... can't you can't talk about it too much because we might lose some uh, audience i was about to say <laughs> we, we do deeply believe it. i'm just saying personally i don't but like i can't go sitting on it just in case yeah no i feel you feel, i'm single too and you know girls like be, they love the What's science shit. i'm a tourist okay uh I'm whatever or, i'm whatever I, saying I, they need me to be that's crazy, dog. You cannot say that. What that's say? that's actually I'm whatever, super crazy. I'm whatever sign they want me to be here or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I don't go on, one of the reasons I don't go on Facebook. Because it's too much of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I stroll through TikTok and someone be like, Yeah, I can't date a whatever sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Damn, you gonna get rid of Or it'd be whole like which signs people? are the worst. And somebody will have like three of them just right off the bat, like, yeah, it'll Leo's be, are the worst. It'll be signs Scorpio's that Scorpio's are the worst. Bad experience with right, just one bad experience that, with Leo. Now, that right. sign is just exiled from dating. I just I or think it'll it, be it, like it'll be like a celebrity that has like they get down on some job and they'll be like I already know his ass was a, a tourist. Yeah. Earlier, <laughs> early in my life, I was going to get a moon tattoo. Mm-hmm. Uh. And then one of the reasons I didn't is because the guy that was going to do the tattoos, like, you been in astrology? I'm like, no. He says, well, usually people that get moon tattoos are like, uh, doing it for, I was like, I'm not fucking doing it. Oh, uh, so then you didn't get to. the tattoo? Because uh, because I really, this is, again, this was when I was first starting to get tattoos at like 17. Uh, big Kid Cuddy guy. You just had a little oh. VC. Okay. A little VC. I had a little bit extra VC. And the moon tattoo was cheap. A little extra uh. VC. <laughs> and I was a big... I mean, I still really like That's Kid Cuddy. But. Well, so you were just inquiring about the moon? Or were you sitting no, in a I chair about, about to get, get it? it. Did you and then it, it. Oh, so yeah, you yeah, backed yeah. out. Was, uh, one of these leg ones. Because um, these are just combinations of shit. There's no oh, okay. to mm-hmm. it. So I just said, forget the the moon one. You did like okay. So you just yeah. swapped it out. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. like, how sold were you on this moon tattoo before Pretty you said cool. that? I mean, because I just have random shit on my body. Okay. So okay. So it's like, I like Cuddy. He's attached to the moon. Let's go get a moon. And the moon, the moon itself is just cool as hell. Mm-hmm. Like you know, one yeah. day it's big and one day it's not there you at all. Any other you think sometimes it got a little color on it. Fake the first moon landing. Wait. What? My bad. We. I think we all asked him a question. Right. I, you Wait, said moon you, landing? Still, I believe in the moon landing. Do you, still, do you have any more tattoos in reference of music? Uh, no. No? Uh-uh. No. I need to get a I'm tattoo, man. man. I, you're 36. You're not getting none. If, <laughs> if you got them now, you're not getting them. Why do niggas love you think so? my age? Bro. No, I'm joking. Because like uh, Suzanne's father-in-law, to get his first tattoo, he's like 40-something. Mm. And now he can't stop. He just keeps gadding shit. Are you going to finish your legs? I'm, I actually have a, uh, my... Tattoo artist, look, that's how crazy this is. Just texted me saying, Can you come in tomorrow? I have an open. Oh. Um, I'm not going to. Okay. But I do have an appointment next week. I just like getting random tattoos, even if they're bad. 
because it'll always remind me of a different point in my life. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember I was into that shit, you know? And it's just happiness for me. So I'm going to get a One Piece tattoo. Oh, that's fire. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm going to get Brooks, probably. Mm. I thought you were going to get the fruit. The devil fruit? Yeah. Nah, it's too... Because <clears throat> when you have something like that, in like 10 years, it'll just like one big-ass blob, you know? That's true. And I can't do that's much a, color on my skin. That's probably my right. fear, too. It's just how it looks like 30, 40 plus years from now or how you feel about it, but... You can always get touch-ups, too. Yeah, I know people that... You, know, have, you only live once. Yeah, I know people that got tattoos and then two years later got it completely removed. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I want a new space. Get this off of me. You know? I heard the laser removal feels worse than the getting action. I've heard that as well. Uh, but I heard Dana I've heard that as well. Oh, for real? See, yeah, I don't know. I, I would never get Ooh. anything removed. I just... This is who I am. Because you didn't even know I had the Gara tattoo. No, I didn't. It's, it's, it's right here. This is Gara's mark on the top of his head. See, nah, I never knew that. Yeah. And you said I just thought it was a cool character. symbol on there. Yeah. Well, he is, though. He's cool as dude. You should get a Dragon Ball Z tattoo. Not a Dragon Ball Z fan. Oh. Uh-uh. I didn't know that. Uh-uh. Not that I don't like it, yeah. but I'm not enough to like it. not a you, head. I thought you actually like enjoyed Dragon Ball Z. To no, it's fine. The... It's just not one to get tattooed. Okay. Right. Yeah. I've been getting. So are you more of a Naruto guy? Naruto and One Piece. Dragon Ball Z was so much better as of like the big a three. kid. When I was like, it don't it for, for me personally for me it didn't age very well, and some of these other ones have. Ooh. Maybe That's I hate when, I hate when that happens. Yeah. Like they 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 were you know just the writing changed mm-hmm. or something happened. It just didn't. It don't it's just got that nostalgia. I I don't watch it as much as I used to. Like I try to get into Super, but it's Dragon Ball Z always just had nostalgia for me because it's just like first of all they had the little intervals like back in the day we know it wasn't no Netflix nothing like you had to wait for the shit to come on which is dope and we all know Dragon Ball Z always got that cliffhangers like on the next so this is some shit I watched like all the damn time it shaped this generation of uh, anime fans for me to wait six episodes to see this nigga Goku go Super Saiyan 2 Mm -hmm. like that shit was amazing I'm always going I feel that but now we're like rewatching at 26 it don't because Mm. Why is this six episodes of time? No, <laughs> why? Really. That's why I say it was so much better when I was younger, and it's just like you, this is gonna sound like reading it is pretty cool, though. I can see that reading it is cool because that six episodes of him like powering up is like seven pages, mm-hmm. and you can get past that shit. And there's no there's no filler episodes, which is big in these uh, big shows. You just read it if you ever want to. Come to my house. We got the entire Dragon Ball Z collection <laughs> there. But, but. In English. <laughs> and, and we got a couple Japanese editions. Okay. Um, all right. That's the yearly uh, anime talk on Through the Wire. We will never come back to it. Talk about yearly. Yeah. <laughs> it just ha- it happens. Uh, but I would love to see y'all get some tattoos, though. I think it would be so funny to see what y'all first one would be. Because I think the first one is the one you think about the most. And then once you get it done, you're like, oh, okay. I just start adding random shit. Mm-hmm. It's the one that's supposed to be the most sentimental. I'd probably get one on my arm or like. One above my knee to start off with. I like the above the knee tattoos. The above the knee is cool. You know, my I'm through the wire one is above my knee. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's hope we keep that name forever. (laughs) I think a face tattoo. I mean, that's still a that's still a a time period in your life though. Regardless, that's what I'm saying. Like if we ever had to rebrand, through the wire got to the point where we had to rebrand. If that makes sense, right? Which means that we probably own the bigger and better things, right? So it's always gonna be there. I had an idea way before, like when I first got this, where I was gonna get. the United States outlined and every place we did a live show, I'll put a star. Oh, wow. Uh, mm. But that ain't happening no more. Yeah. I mean, I see people do that with like a project. Like you put that on the wall mm-hmm. type shit. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not dedicated to the wire, you could just say that. <laughs> you're going to have to like, expand it though because you're going to have to put Toronto there. I'm going to have to put Toronto and going to have to put Australia on the back of the leg. You know, right. they're kind of cool. You own to the wire? No. I'm one of the founding fathers though. True. Facts. One of them. I can only put shit on me that I own. <laughs> I'm just joking. I was about to say, like, <laughs> damn, that leaves out. That water bottle, that just water. But you don't own just water. You own that water bottle. So I wouldn't get it tatted on me. Mm. What do you own for to meet the criteria? I own myself. Just get a picture <laughs> of a tattoo of your face on your face. I, I own my you remember money. that? From uh I own you. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I can get you tatted on me. You could. I give you consent. Even though you don't need consent to get anybody tattooed. I own you. No, I'm joking. Who did I say in the chat? They said they had a tattoo. And he was like, wait, who got a tattoo? 
Oh, he had a bro. It was a weird as like I don't know why they. I would get tatted. I face. just I don't know. I oh, he had, he had a D'Angelo Russell tattoo. Oh, he, he has like, a D'Angelo Russell. I don't know if he, he meant like D'Angelo he had a similar Russell tattoo, tattoo. <laughs> like he got the now tattoo, or he literally had D'Angelo Russell on his fa- uh, D'Angelo Russell face on. That's him. always different. Like yeah. the guy that got the Tatis tattoo and then met Tatis, and Tatis signed his tattoo with a pen, and he immediately ran to a tattoo artist to get the signature tattooed Holy as well. Shit. Which maybe kind of cool, that but it is cool. just a. Baseball player. Didn't some dude get the Celtics winning the finals last year tatted on Absolutely. him? Absolutely. And then they, that's crazy. Now, he those just gotta, type of tattoos I are believe crazy. that happened every year. He just yeah, put I think those are fun, though. Finals appearance. You think those are fun? You, <laughs> yeah. you know finals a appearance. championship tatted on you that never happened. I think that's his that's dude's point. He always had a story. He always had a story. Right. Yeah. There's a story with and that, I guess. if they win this year, he just X out the, one, the last number and put a three there. And right. it's just... That I might even be, be that fun. might be an even cooler story. Exactly. Like I manifested it type would of y'all thing. Would you ever get your girl tattooed on you? Nah, no. I would. Nah. But you know what? I do have a tattoo that I would do the name. I wouldn't be doing no face shit, but it would be like a name. You would do a name? Same. Yeah. I, I, would. I would do a name, not face probably. Name. No or... faces. Faces are so faces fucking hard is, to do. That's too crazy, right. bro. I I have a tattoo that symbolizes Suzanne, but I don't have her name. Okay. It's a I have a sunflower. That the stem of it writes Avery, so it's Avery and Suzanne together. Oh, that's fire! Oh, yeah. I hate to do it, but y'all seen Drake tattoos? He has like nothing but faces. Like, he does had, he have like a KD tattoo? I think so, but I think it's just KD's number or something. Some, yeah, something like that. Thirty-five. I, I seen a shot at like he's got. Uh, did you? The cool one is the Abbey Road. Bro, the, this uh, is all crazy. The Beatles walking. I just got this notification about a UConn fan doing exactly what we just said. Oh he wow! Did, he did a. That's crazy that this shit is happening. They like listening. About it. Yeah, they listening. They listening. Um, but yeah, Drake got that Abbey Road tattoo, but he's like, it's the it's the Beatles walking, mm-hmm. on Abbey, but he's that walking insane, in front of them. Know, all of this man tattoos. But don't do that, bro. <laughs> it, it is. Hey, hey it, don't let him do that to you, bro. Because we will be on a random street in California, and this nigga people will be like, that motherfucker right there, that's Paul George Cook. <laughs> <laughs> that's Paul. Hey, that's thank, you, that's so, thank you, Mike. for his Instagram. Thank you, Mike. I cannot tell you three Paul George tattoos. Though. Thank you, Mike. Because uh, to know a person tattoos, Paul George is the biggest artist in the whole wide sh- world. Shirt, shirtless. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's on his arm. <laughs> Chill out. I'm I'm not D Mills. <laughs> Recognizing back. Then we all react. Recognizing you. that. You're, you're proving my point. We all reacted to that because that was like. You got to know, like, Recognizing that man's back like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Video coming soon, I guess. It, I guess it is. There's it's so it's much it's attached. Not, maybe it's next year, though. There's it's so next. much attached <laughs> to that Abbey Road tattoo because he pat. He said, I got more slaps than the Beatles, dog. You know the line. But <laughs> so, so that's what I'm saying. To know, to know our boys, like, I don't know, bro. Just to be recognizing so somebody's seeing, back is weird. Tattoos. I'm surprised that he got all of this shit. I didn't know Drake had this many tattoos. Yeah. He, he, had a, he had a Lil Wayne face. Yeah. He's got Aaliyah's face, Sade's face. He does Forty's faces. Face. He does faces. His mom, dad, grandma, and The uncle. only reason I know is because I remember when he was getting them, it was a, such a big fucking deal, especially the Kevin Durant, okay. Steph Curry shit. But I've never seen these. I can't tell you where he has. Isn't one. this Steph Curry one like he just has a little ass 30 on him? 30. Like on right. Him. Dude, I did not know. I don't think it's that we. I don't think that's as weird as you try to make it sound, Pizza. No, I, I especially I the Abbey Road tattoo. Because the Beatles is like huge, and then the, like it went viral because yeah, it was a whole know. thing. I, I, I never knew see he had the Beatles. So he's got them. You know that that's that album cover. They're all walking down the street, Here's and then the, he's in the front actual, of them the walking because he's ahead of them in yeah. terms of the Damn, numbers. That's or whatever. not considered disrespectful in a way. <laughs> I think some people think it's disrespectful. Yeah, They're not messing with it. I never seen that tattoo. Yeah, me either. Would you rather listen to the Beatles or Drake? I okay, Drake. Drake, yeah, yeah, Drake for sure. <laughs> See, <laughs> hey, I get down with Mike. Drake That's my brother for real. Players, like, would you rather? Well, because he said he, who you rather listen to? No, nah, because he had my back. That's all I'm saying. Mike is trolling you. Oh my god! <laughs> what you mean? See, I'm not trolling. Come on now. You had his back by asking me. Oh, Drake has really a face listen? tattoo? No, not no, not. not I'm talking about the earlier part. I be seeing where, where he coming from. I'm a I'm a. Uh, I like to play both sides. So, who tattoos do you know? Not many. You didn't even know my tattoos. We've been friends for 20 years. That's something I also really don't look at, though, unless it's really standing out to me. Didn't we, well, didn't we just play 
What's it called? And he had zero points. If you I had a couple. Oh points. yeah. Well, you uh, were dead last. I'm, I'm I had, sorry. I had spoiler no, for the video. But. I mean, like if it's like Derrick Rose shit, I'm be like, oh. But I were know you going Derrick off Rose. the? You weren't going off tattoos. You was going on the faces being in it in the body. Derrick Rose may be the one person who I know his tattoo. Demar Derozan too. I don't know. DeMar I think you got the Demar Derozan right he in did. the video. He got yeah. the Demar Derozan. I, I just know that Joker tattoo he has on his shoulder. Yeah. That's what we talking about. Poudini. Poudini. <laughs> no, I'm talking about. He talking about. You know Poudini. Yeah, he didn't yeah. though. In the video, you oh, gonna see did. he didn't know. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I didn't know that tattoo until yeah, I, I did the like research for the video. That was just, I feel like they didn't ran with that story or like talked about it so much. It's hard not to know. And I know LeBron chose one, but I don't really right know chosen one. one. Shit, like I know DeAndre Aiden's tattoo, dominating. I feel yeah. Kobe had one that I felt like was real, like on his arm. That I think if I could point that out, you know, damn. I feel like I can't. I can't visualize any of Kobe's tattoos. But that's why I don't have no tats. Because if I get if I get a tat, I wouldn't get tatted. I don't believe it. <laughs> I have a one tattoo. I think Drake tattoos are horrible. Not my nail style. Nail space. Not my yeah, style. I, I kind of like it. Yeah. I personally it's like Derek. I, I, Derek kept saying he wanted a, a lion. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I couldn't do that. Doesn't um Caleb have a lion? Or is that Terrence? One of my friends also has a lion on his arm. I don't really. Know. I feel like Caleb to, uh, has a decent amount of tattoos. Oh, then that means then it's it's Caleb then. Caleb has the lion on his arm. Mm -hmm. Or is it a tiger? I don't know. They're fucking the same to me. I couldn't tell you the difference by looking at them. I've always considered myself like a clean cut dude, but I, I've seen some tattoos recently and I'm, man, I'm I'm getting swayed. What you going to do is just jump in? I've lasted 25 years with no tattoos, but I, man, I'm getting swayed. Does Luca only just have a sleeve? Like, that's all he has? He has a back piece, too. If I'm oh, yeah, he definitely not. Because no, okay, I see yeah. it peeking out the, his jersey. I like the hand tats. Hand tats are cool. Hand tats, leg tats. I just feel like because I'm dark skin, it's don't. I mean, it would look really cool on you because you have the lighter skin, and it won't look as cool on me. Aren't hand tats the most painful, too? Probably up there. Uh, I would say finger. probably head tattoos are more painful. Uh, ribs? Ribs aren't ribs that bad. Be. I have both of my ribs yeah. tatted, and it's it's not that bad. What about wrists? You don't have no wrists. I don't tattoos. have any wrists. I don't have any arm tattoos. That was the one I rule I had like in my pops. Like a sensitive mm. area. I, I would definitely do a leg tat. I just texted you. It's like. You like your fine line. That joints. like patchwork, but like Da Vinci Code vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like those I think. tattoos would be so the only yeah, thing that scares yeah. me, the only thing that scares me about these, I hear bad stories about like ten years down the line, the fine lines mm. start to get a little bit crooked because the 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 you ink expands a little bit. More. I should get tatted. Absolutely, get tatted. I, your tat's gonna be so detailed. But yeah, I, I like this. Stuff, I would though. really like when when KB was saying like, oh, the first one is sentimental, and then after that, you just kind of put whatever. I'm just I'm so calculated and like. I I think everyone like I'd probably be planning out the whole leg mm -hmm. before I even got started sure. or something, which like might I, prevent me from getting started. But these tattoos that you just put, the style is so itself that I feel like that's the only style. Like you have to dedicate yourself to and, that and style. It, I probably had one artist type yeah. of thing. Yeah, no, I have one art. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We lock in way. and yep. be on the iPad drawings. Yep. So like I would be a little meticulous about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but man, I'm thinking about but. So corny, but like I don't think James Bond got no tattoos. You oh, know what man. I'm saying? So it's just like I don't know if that's my vibe, man. I think I'm a clean cut dude, but I've yeah. been man, I'm I've been getting influenced recently. You should, bro. If like you personally, it, like when soon. when we go hoop and I see you in the Grinches and you got the leg sleeve going, I'm like, oh, I gotta do that. Look kind of cool. It's cool. I can see a lot of people not liking my tattoos because they are. It's not a sleeve. It's like it's patchwork. You know, it's a lot of patchwork. Yeah. Um, but I fucking love it. I think that's patchwork is That's dope. all that matters. Yeah, all facts. Yeah. Absolutely. I ain't got nothing on my body for somebody else. Right. It's because I wanted it. All right. I think patchwork is cool. But yeah, as a sneakerhead, you know, as somebody who enjoys the nothing? warmer yeah. climate, like. Bro, who was that in the uh, in the tournament that had that Chico tattoo? I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't and know it who was. And it was like the grand, it was the GTA Chico for a limited ammo and yeah. he had that on his arm. That was dope. Who Who's it, Nick Young, that say he don't got tattoos on his shooting arm? Because that's yeah. for, that's a shooting hand. For bucket strictly. For bucket strictly. <laughs> why, uh, why Leonard also has a name? <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Why Leonard also has an arm that's just completely naked as well. He has one with a sleeve uh, and nothing on it. I think one sleeve is cool. That's, like why, that's why I brought up Luca early because I feel like mm -hmm. that one sleeve he got is just like that shit's raw. Yeah, Rubio. Do you, do you Rubio got some cool ass tattoos? Uh, do, do you know the one of Jordan Clarkson on his face that says "Love"? 
Mm-mm. So he's he's got one yeah. that says love. Yeah. But it's one of those ones that if you turn it upside down, it says pain. Th- there's a name for that. I forget the name uh, of it too. I forget what those are called, but I there's a name for that. Cool. Those are fire. Yeah, yeah I that, just that's a that's raw. Um, that's and I raw. didn't recognize it until I saw TikTok about it a couple days ago. I always saw it as just look, he got love tattoo. But uh, like, oh shit. Yeah, if you do if he is hanging upside down, you do see pain. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, no, I never That's cool. That. I'm trying to look. You know what that means, right? Nope. Love is pain. Boy, you so fucking <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You know them tattoos, boy. Hey, that's a good episode of Through the Wire. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We will see y'all Saturday with some big, big things going on. Hopefully, next time we see y'all, we in the second round of the playoffs. Yes, sir. We out. Peace. Peace.